That's what helping a friend is all about. For Maurice and little Jaden, this moment borders on the extraordinary. Not because of what's happening, but because a few months ago, it wouldn't have happened at all. After years of being in denial, he decided to get help for his depression. It didn't take a miracle to get his life back. But if you ask Maurice, he's living one now. If you have concerns about your mental health, seek help right away. Learn more at up2sd.org. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right. You know I'll be there all your life. When you need me, I'll be by your side. By your side. And every day is a different day. Everything is in everything. Even when you think things can never ever be the same. Don't be scared of the world. I'll be here to stay. By your side. Even when your heart ain't listening. Or your mind takes you a different way. When the adults in a child's life talk early and often about the dangers of underage drinking, the message gets stronger every time. I'll be by your side. Talk. They hear you. Good evening. I will now call the June 16, 2021 San Diego County Board of Supervisors evening budget hearing to order. I appreciate everyone joining us for what is a continuation uh, of our previous budget meeting, and uh, we appreciate all those who were able to speak at our uh, original meeting, and we continue the meeting to this evening to hear from additional folks uh, who want to join us. I want to note for the record, Supervisor Desmond is not here today. 
Uh, he is commemorating with his family and celebrating the life of his brother, uh, who they recently lost. And our, our thoughts and prayers uh, are with the Desmond family this evening, and we completely understand his absence. Um, and, uh, and, and so again, we're thinking of them this evening. With that, let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. I'd like to know for the record that one supervisor is participating via teleconference. And with that, I will now call the roll. Uh, Supervisor Anderson. Don't see him joining yet. Uh, Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Here. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, I. Chair Fletcher. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher here. Um, so again, we're going to uh, get started here. We had the formal presentation uh, multiple times, including at the beginning of this process. And so tonight, what we're really here to do is to hear from the public with your thoughts uh, about the proposed uh, budget. Uh, again, this is a continuation of previous budget hearings. Uh, as a board, we're still in listening mode. Uh, we're really here to uh, hear from the public and allow the, the public to weigh in on their thoughts. After the conclusion of this evening budget hearing, uh, supervisors and the Chief Administrative Officer, uh, Officer can submit new requests for considerations in the budget, uh, a budget change letter up until June 23rd. Then we will hold budget deliberations where we will vote on the final budget uh, on June 30th. The proposed budget that we're going to be talking about today is guided by our framework for the future that was adopted by this board unanimously in January. We declared the new board would govern differently. Uh, at the core was a commitment to uh, equity, to fairness, to justice, uh, and to tackling a lot of the regional needs that we see. Uh, and I'm proud that you see these principles reflected in the foundation of the budget we have before us. Um, and a cornerstone of that also is public engagement. And so we're here tonight to continue uh, what is, I believe, the most robust uh, and open budget process this county has had. And uh, I'm pleased to see the evening budget hearing and really look forward to hearing from everyone. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Clerk, uh, who will uh, outline our, uh, our process for the evening and kick us off uh, with hearing from the public. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. And members of the board, on May 6, 2021, the Chief Administrative Officer's recommended operational plan for fiscal years 2021 through 23 was released. As the chair mentioned, today marks the continuation of those budget hearings that began on Monday, June 14, 2021, for the board to receive oral testimony in all areas of the budget. Pursuant to the board's rules of procedure, members of the public that spoke at the hearing on Monday will not be allowed to speak again this evening. We have 170 requests to speak, um, 11 in person, and 154 requests to speak by phone, as well as three group presentations. Presentations. For members of the public that requested to speak by phone, please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers and we'll begin with the group presentations. I'll call the groups, um, all, all of the individuals all at once and you can line up uh, on the east wall under the murals and you will have 10 minutes to address the board and we'll ask you to please state your name for the audio record. Begin with the first group presentation that includes Julie Simper, Christine Figari, and James Mason. No sound. And again, if each person, as you come to the podium, can state your name for the audio record. Okay. We're just waiting for the presentation to be pulled up. Excellent. That's great. Thank you. Okay, first and foremost, thank you very much for allowing us to present this evening. My name is Julie Simper. I am a member of Preserve Alpine's Heritage, a grassroots group that was formed in October of 2020, following the late summer release of the proposed 26-acre Alpine County Park. We are here today to ask that if the board approves the requested 10.5 million for the park, that this funding be contingent upon the design and scope being significantly reduced and scaled back so that the park enhances, not overwhelm, overwhelms, Alpine's unique, natural, cultural, and rural heritage. Next slide, please. So, let's take a trip to Alpine. The area, as you can see, the park is proposed for a rural neighborhood about 1.2 miles from the inhabited town center along a two-lane country road. The land includes imperiled Engelman oak trees, native grasslands, access to beautiful open spaces and amazing sunsets. 
It's also adjacent to a natural ecological preserve that is Wright's Field, often called the Gem of Alpine. Many terms have been used to describe this park, and many of these also by the Department of Parks and Recreation. Local park, county park, community park, and even sports park or sports complex, according to other categorizations and similar parks. Semantics aside, the proposed 26-acre park includes almost 300 parking spots, multiple sports facilities, basketball, pickleball, baseball, multi-purpose sports fields, a skate and all-wheel park, staff offices, volunteer housing, security lighting, and more. The whole thing enclosed by a landscape berm the length of the park, thus blocking those beautiful views and sunsets. Context is everything, and we truly implore that if you haven't done so, go to the property, walk the perimeter of the proposed park, take in the location. You will truly appreciate how overwhelming this park is gonna be for the location and surrounding area. Our organizational position is clear. We recognize and appreciate all the years of hard work has, that has been done by many to bring this park to Alpine. We support a park at this location. However, we do not support this park in this location. There are simply too many concerns and unanswered questions to conscientiously proceed as proposed. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Chris. I'm Christine Figari. There are four key areas of concern. The first is location. It does not provide equitable access. Access is one of the five key principles for parks listed by the National Recreation and Park Association. They state, quote, everyone deserves access to a high quality park that is within a 10 minute walk of where they live. I expect that Department of Park and Recs has a similar goal, but this park is a drive to park. It's located approximately two miles from the town center and several apartment complexes, and is a mile or more from public transportation. Does this provide equitable access? Shouldn't we be considering placing some park amenities closer to the town center? Second concern is public safety. There are serious traffic issues to be addressed here. The park is located on a curvy country road with virtually no sidewalks on most of it. There have been several fatalities over the last 10 years and a recent hit and run of a teenager. The road will not safely handle the amount of traffic that's expected unless the county makes significant improvements. Is the county prepared to make that kind of an investment? And will all of the county departments involved commit to completing these improvements before the park opens? Thank you, My name's James Mason. Climate change, change and its exacerbation of the natural cycles of drought in California will render this park design a park for yesterday. As such, it's going to be at variance with the county's climate action plans and public climate uh, efforts. Water use will be necessary across the, the entire park. Even if native plants are placed there, they'll require water to become established, water which California simply doesn't have any longer and most likely will not in the future. The, the soil here is unique. It's a result of a unique ge geology and biochemistry, and that's what actually creates the grassland. It can't be simply replicated. And once it's destroyed, it's destroyed forever. Even trying to move native plants into this area will require significant water use. The land is contiguous with Wrights Field Ecological Preserve. And as, the, as increased activity occurs in this park, that will spill over to cause ecological destruction to the Wrights Field. It will remain open space, but it won't be the ecological preserve it is now. So we ask to wait to fund this park until a full environmental impact report has been released and receives due process of public scrutiny and agency review. So one of the major concerns underlying this whole process has been the lack of transparency. Up until this design was released late last summer in 2020, the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Alpine Community Planning Group told the community that this would be a 12 to 15 acre park. It's 26, and the DPR has said that it's 26 because they had 98 acres and could simply make it bigger. Also, there were four public out me uh, outreach meetings, and this is based on the information provided by DPR on their website. The first two were in 2019 during the conceptual phases, uh, to which only 200, less than 200 unique individuals provided input. It was biased as well. The online survey generated only 21 responses. 
The third meeting in 2020, this was after the park release, was run by a, an external vendor, a conflicted vendor who is managing the skate and all wheel, wheel park elements of the park. The most important meeting in why we're here today took place in January of 2021. To that, over 300 people showed up in response to this design after they had seen it. Um, there was significant and disproportionate public concerns, questions, and opposition compared to the support. Despite this significant um, concern, none of this is reflected in any of the DPR information they provide. The negative, the opposition is completely eliminated. Further, and again, based on the DPR's own data, this, there's strong support for nature-based activities, open spaces, not concrete parking lots. Also, there is low or little data support that supports the inclusion of the active sports and the athletic activities. Despite this, almost all of those activities are included in this design. To start to wrap this up, we truly appreciate the effort spent in bringing a park to Alpine. We appreciate the purchase of these unique 98 acres, and we truly appreciate the great services that DPR is providing the county. With this design, though, something went wrong. I don't know, maybe DPR was overly influenced by a few select voices in Alpine that they listen to regularly. Maybe the park designers didn't realize that significant resources were already planned for renovations for our middle school and our elementary school. Maybe the park designers didn't spend enough or even any time at the park site to see the location and the surroundings. Whatever the reasons, this park design is not supported by DPR's own published data. And the more Alpine residents learn about this design, the opposition is growing. Please ask yourselves, are you truly convinced that the current plans for this $28 million project are the right plans in the right location for Alpine. Preserve Alpine's heritage is a passionate, committed, and growing group, and we're in it for the long haul. We have followed the process. We've done everything right. We've responded to the calls for public comment. Both the DPR and our local planning group have disregarded and even denigrated this public feedback. So here we are now before you. We recognize that you inherited this plan from your predecessors, and we understand the, the desire to move forward. However, you repeatedly state during these budget hearings that the new Board of Supervisors wants to govern differently. We are asking that you do just that by one, first and foremost, validating the significant public outcry and concern. You're seeing it on the e-comments. You're seeing it with us here before you, with the people calling in. Hear us. And if you decide to approve the 10.5 million for an Alpine County, Alpine County Park, we ask that that approval be contingent upon a reduced and scaled back design, and that after the environmental impact report is, re is released, that the revised park plan receive due process of public scrutiny and agency review. Next slide, please. So we leave you with this. Communities like Alpine that are indeed outside of the urban center of uh, San Diego, they do have a greater capacity to grow. That's the justification that the DPR gave for almost doubling the size of the park. And this is taken from the park's master plan released last December in 2020. However, in all of these communities, any future growth must be carefully balanced with other factors to preserve their identity and unique resources. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to the second group presentation. That includes Colin Campbell III, Colin Campbell II, and Travis Lyon. And we have a presentation as well. Good evening, Chairman Fletcher, fellow Board of Supervisors. I appreciate this opportunity to present to you tonight. My name is Travis Lyon. I'm the chairman of the Alpine Community Planning Group. I'm a school board member for the Alpine Union School District. and I'm a board member for the Backcountry Land Trust. We can go to the next slide. 
You know, I, I want to go over a couple points that I think are important, um, and they're a little bit about messaging. Sports complex versus community park. Um, this has been a very effective way of branding this park, this community park in Alpine, as a sports complex. Um, if we go to go to the next slides, and we can go through these next few pretty quick. I brought up a couple slides just to give you an example. I always say that um, you know it when you see it. Santee Sportsplex, number of fields, um, very dedicated towards athletic fields, focused on athletic fields. We can go to the next slide. Lakeside National, another great example of what is exactly a sports box. Four baseball fields, beautiful complex. Members of our community use it on a regular base basis. We'll go to the next slide. As we get into, this is a, a rendering of a park that's proposed for Bonzel. Another beautiful park. Again, I think Parks and Recreation has done a great job of gathering community feedback and designing the park to fit the community. In Bonzel, the feedback has been very slated towards athletic fields. As you can see, multiple athletic fields, baseball, soccer, some of the same components that you would find in a community park, grass, open areas for recreation, a dog park, um, bike, bike skills facilities, all wheel park. But again, a little bit more of a blend necessarily than the sportsplex at the other two. Um, go to the next slide. And this is a good example of the park that I think Alpine's been looking at and wondering for a long time. This is something that's lacking. We have over 18,000 residents in Alpine. And I'd like to point out that we have um, 1.83 park or acres of parkland per thousand residents. The county's goal is 10 acres. So we're, we're roughly been about a fifth. But again, now we're starting to see some aspects of a, a sport, sports fields, basketball fields. But again, you have a, a lot of open space, a lot of grass area. So if we can go to the next slide. This is a rendering of the, the, the park that's being proposed. I think the park and recs department has done a great job of incorporating all the aspects of a community park that we've been lacking, um, open areas for grass, um, We've been holding our community events on asphalt for a long time. I think Alpine's done a great job at doing this and encouraging community feedback and getting out, um, but it's, it's been a challenge. Um, this, is, this park has one baseball field, a couple basketball courts, and then a couple components that are very specific, um, unique. Uh, the bike skills park, the skate park. Again, these are things that people in Alpine have been asking for for years. I've been chair of the group for the last five, six years. I've been on the group since 2009 when I moved there. This is not a new plan. Um, this is not a new search. Actually, it's a decades long search for parkland. And so um, we can go through the next few slides. I wanted to highlight a few of the sites that we've looked at because I think what I, what I find challenging is this pursuit of perfection and location and, and putting away this great plan that we have in front of us. I think we can skip actually to the next two slides because um, I want to hit on a couple of the points that, that were brought up, um, access and, and you know, social equity for access. Where the park is located, and we go two more slides, I think there's one that shows the park in relation to Wrights Field. Um, where the park's located is in the center of Alpine and is adjacent to a preserve, um, actually currently over 245 acres owned by the Backcountry Land Trust, preserved in perpetuity. It's open for walking, hiking, and other outdoor recreation. The county's purchase is preserving another 72 acres for open space. And we're looking at locating a active sports park, community park, whatever you want to call it, right next to it. Um, the difference is the access to Bar Wrights Field has been limited because if you don't live near that park, there's no safe where to park and enter into the park. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Because I believe public safety is a, a major portion of this component. I live on South Grade, I live not far from this park. There are accidents. It has been a dangerous road. I think it's important to note the existing conditions are dangerous. And part of the reason they're dangerous is because the speeds are too high and there hasn't been an impetus for stop signs 
which the county is proposing to put at the entrance of the park. Um, the other point I wanted to note was the, the discussion of climate change and this location being a negative aspect. We've got 18,000 residents in Alpine who drive down the hill or drive up to Pine Valley Park to get to active parkland. I've got three children of my own. I've taken many trips down the hill to find um, all the amenities that this would bring closer to home. And if we can go to the next slide. So I wanted to highlight um, the community support. In April, the Alpine Community Planning Group voted unanimously in favor of the park with 11 yes, zero no, and one abstention. That support was based on broad community support over the last 20 years. This park supported by the Alpine Union School District, the Viejas Band of Kumaya Indians, the Alpine Chamber of Commerce, the Alpine Education Foundation, Alpine AYSO. I understand these are difficult decisions and when you place any type of development in an area, you're going to find pushback. I'd ask the board to keep in mind the 18,000 residents. Um, less than 500 have signed a petition in opposition. I understand that. I think a lot of it's been based on branding and there, there might be that opposition. I think there's a lot of support out there um, and I hope the, the board recognizes that support. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Colin Campbell. Hello, yes, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am Colin Lee Campbell II, longtime resident of my family of four of Alpine and I belong to several different service organizations. Um, we've been working on a park for over 30 years in Alpine and it, it seems like it's always something that, that's prevented it, um, mostly what, what location to put it. Um, it is true, we, we have a park in Pine Valley but that's 25 minutes away from us east um, and it's not really our park. I would like a place for community gatherings, for events, for um, fundraising opportunities. Um, I'm very appreciative that three quarters of the acres have been dedicated to preserving open space. I know you're working with 98 acres, but just 25 are dedicated to the park itself. Um, and I love the fact that you're gonna have paved pathways for most types of wheels, um, bikes, hiking, skateboarding, um, traveling to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and Sun Valley, Idaho, I've noticed these paved pathways are very, very popular amongst those residents, and I'd like to have them at our park. Also, a dog park. We don't have a dog park in Alpine, and again, we have 18,000 residents. We probably have over 10,000 dogs that would appreciate the dog park. Um, a staging evacuation area would be nice for large animals and for people too. Um, my family had 17 horses um, due to the 2018 West Fire hit Alpine Boulevard. Um, this would be a much safer area to evacuate than what happened just a few years ago. Um, as my family unfortunately was nearby the nexus of the fire. I am appreciative of the pickleball, the basketball, the soccer fields. Um, I know it's not a sports complex, but it'll give our our kids a chance to go outside with their friends to play, which is a, a pretty healthy op opportunity. Um, and I actually think for Wright's Field itself, because it's adjacent to Wright's Field, this would provide some advocacy because it'll bring awareness and possibly the Backcountry Land Trust would um, see this as valuable for people supporting Wright's Field. And uh, of course the exercise stations and in something unique to Alpine, a feature will be the equestrian facilities. I also appreciate that. And then of course the live on safety representative would be very helpful. And something important to me, because I do live nearby, um, what is a, a dangerous roadway, south grade, calming measures and a stop sign would be very helpful so there's safe entry and exit to the park. And of course we would need parking places, um, although they don't all have to be paved, that would help mitigate some of the dangers of South Grade Road. And another fact of Alpine is we don't have a high school, so we don't have, or we have fewer joint use purpose Sir, fields. That's the time uh, we do need to hear from your third speaker. We'll give you okay. just a few seconds. My son, Colin. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Colin Campbell III. I'm uh, the son of the uh, previous speaker, 
I wanted to express my support for the park. I want the uh, park for me and my brother. Me and my brother would like to use the, the park for uh, outside activities like pickleball, hiking, baseball, and running. Um, I believe that the park will bring joy for, for the youth of Alpine and will bring uh, kids outside away from uh, playing video games and uh, watching TV. Uh, thank you, I support this park. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now move on to our last group presentation that includes Blair Overstreet, Luis Montero Adams, and Ana Laura Martinez. Good evening, Chair Fletcher and Board of Supervisors. My name is Luis Montero Adams. My pronouns are he, him, his. And tonight I'm here to speak on behalf of the San Diego LGBT Community Center, as well as the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. For those who may not know us, the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition, or ISDF for short, is a coalition of residents, community groups, advocacy organizations, and workers fighting for San Diego that is not, that is for the people and by the people. We believe in a community, economy, and government that puts power into the hands of the people who live and work in our communities. I'd like to start tonight by thanking this Board of Supervisors and the CAO for your progressive agenda that you've been able to pass so far. Specifically, we want to say thank you to Supervisor Lawson Reamer, Vice Chair Vargas, and Chair Fletcher for your leadership. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have already helped pass this year. Speaking specifically for the center, I wanna say thank you for supporting the $5 million for LGBTQ housing and homelessness services as part of the ARPA funding. Tonight, ISDF would like to speak to four main issues. The Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, Immigrant Legal Defense Funds, and the need for an audit of the Sheriff's Department. As the Mobile Crisis Response Team program continues to be a success, community stakeholders across the region are hopeful for this critical component to address the need for non-police alternatives. I think we can all agree that law enforcement cannot be the only option for someone experiencing a non-violent mental health or substance use crisis. Due to the very specific skills needed, trained clinical mental and behavioral health professionals are better suited than law enforcement to provide assistance in these crises. Our ask is that you budget an additional $1 million for MCRT funding to ensure that this service is available throughout the county in order, uh, in order to preserve life and human dignity. Thank you for your time, and I'm going to pass the mic to our coalition partner, Ana Lauda Martinez, to continue from here. Good evening. My name is Ana Laura Martinez. She, her, they, then, theirs. I am here on behalf of the Center on Policy Initiatives and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. We ask that you fully fund the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement. This office is a step forward to protect workers' rights. All workers should have safe and healthy workplaces, should be paid for all of their work, should have protection against discrimination and harassment, and should not face retaliation for claiming their rights. Yet in the county of San Diego, workers have faced these violations with little to no recourse or justice. The people most impacted by these violations are people of color, immigrants, women. They're workers in industries that pay low wages. These workers do not have the resources to protect their rights. This is why it is important for the county of San Diego to fully fund the Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement to ensure workers have a local resource when faced with injustices at their workplace. We also ask that you fully fund the Immigrant Legal Defense Program. This program seeks to provide justice in an inherently unjust system by providing access to counsel for people who cannot afford legal representation in immigration removal proceedings. People who cannot afford an attorney are forced to navigate complicated immigration court systems without representation. Language barriers make this even more daunting. Immigrants and people seeking asylum deserve access to counsel and a fair day in court. Thank you for your time. I'm passing it to Blair Oversteet, or organizer at CPI. Good evening, my name is Blair Overstreet. Um, I use she and they pronouns. Uh, I am with the Center on Policy Initiatives and also the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. 
As you've just heard and as you will hear throughout the rest of the evening, San Diegans want public dollars to be used to support programs and services that our communities need and that actually keep us all safe, like many of the ones that you've supported this budget season. As long as a disproportionate amount of county funds are allocated to departments that promote policing and incarceration, the health and well-being of San Diego residents will always be in jeopardy. Jails, prisons, and detention centers have historically been punitive institutions, failing to provide care or rehabilitation. They have never been safe or healthy places for our beloved community members, and especially not for communities of color and low-income communities that have been disproportionately harmed by the criminal legal system. One area of the budget in which public dollars have historically been overinvested is the Sheriff's Department. In this year's proposed budget, the county is allocating more than $1 billion of public funds to the Sheriff's Department. This continues a problematic legacy of historical overinvestment and incarceration. The intentions that have been expressed during recent departmental hearings for extensive future building and renovation projects in our jails raise concerns that the sheriff is pushing for continued overinvestment in systems of incarceration behind closed doors, even as crime rates are going down, jail populations are declining, and more effective systems of public safety and crisis response are being implemented, like the one you just heard about. Furthermore, during the pandemic, we saw that it is possible to, a public, to approach public safety in a different way. Proposals for future spending should take into account lessons learned during COVID-19. And I thank you for asking those questions at the dais. While the board, thanks to new leadership, has started to make significant changes, Sheriff Gore is continuing to make budget decisions with no accountability to the Board of Supervisors or the public. And the lack of transparency is unacceptable and undemocratic. In order to allocate funds appropriately to address the needs of all San Diegans, we must have information. And thus far, the sheriff has not provided adequate responses to questions asked both from the dais and from community members. Since the sheriff is reluctant to provide information to the public, we ask that the Board of Supervisors call for an audit of the sheriff's budget to provide transparency and accountability. This audit should include, but not be limited to, the components shared in a letter submitted to the board by the ISDF and, C and CPAC coalitions this week, in addition to any information requested by the public. Many of you supervisors are committed to decarceration and criminal justice reform, and that is clear from the investments you've made in programs that center community care and equity. And even for those not committed to our vision of decarceration, <clears throat> you ran on a platform of transparency and fiscal responsibility. For those reasons, we ask that all of you use your power to hold the San Diego County Sheriff's Department accountable to the values of transparency and accountability, which are essential pillars of our democracy. As decision makers on our behalf, it's critical that you have the information you need to be able to represent your constituents. And the county residents are also entitled to information about how their county dollars are spent. We're really proud that ISDF, in collaboration with supervisors, have made steps to invest in what San Diegans need. For example, the Office of Immigrant, Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, the Youth Environmental Corps Program, Improving Outreach and Accessibility for Self-Sufficiency Programs, Doula Care, Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement, Immigrant Legal Defense Fund, and no-cost phone calls for incarcerated San Diegans. These are huge things to celebrate. And we look forward to working together to continue reshaping the county budget to better serve San Diego communities. Let's continue this momentum. Thank you. We'll now move on to the individual speakers. I'll be calling you in groups of five. As I call your name, please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. I'd like to invite forward Robert Fagari, Eric Ray, Yusef Miller, Holly Herring, and Lisa Vincent. You may come forward in any order. You will have two minutes to address the board. And I'll ask you to please uh, begin by stating your name for the audio record. And we're gonna be keeping speakers to the time limits. So please be respectful of other speakers so that when you hear the buzzer, that's your cue to end your comments. As long as there isn't a gong, that's all <laughs> I ask for. I'm uh, Bob Figari from Alpine. Alpine residents, like my family and neighbors, are pretty upset about the proposed Alpine Park plan. DPR and ACPG surveyed hundreds of Alpine residents in face-to-face -face and virtual meetings, and over 90% of these people wanted a nature-based park 
with picnic tables, playground, dog park, and walking and bike trails. DPR ignored the surveys. Instead, they packed the plan with all the stuff they wanted, plus what a small fraction of politically powerful sports complex advocates lobbied for, and, and that's their original moniker, not mine. The leaders of this faction hold key positions in Alpine on the ACPG, the school board, and B, uh, BCLT, and they have an established communications network that's really tough to compete with. We have hundreds of followers, but little political power. We're trying to organize, but lost a lot of time to due to the COVID epidemic that made neighborhood involvement and in networking very difficult. So we have questions. Are, are, are your goals of equity, sustainability, and safety mere platitudes? Who watchdogs the DPR? Why do you allow politically powerful stakeholders to have overriding influence? Why not wait for the EIR? Why would you support acres of new playing fields that require thousands of gallons of water while ordinary citizens are tearing out their lawns? Why would you fund more sports field when the Joan McQueen School is getting a humongous three uh, field sports complex renovation in the fall that's perfect for joint use. Why not put a skate and bike park in town so neighborhood kids have safe and easy access instead of a, a dangerous route? Why would you pave paradise and put in a parking lot for 270 cars and 1,000 people a day? Respectfully, I think you're jumping the shark on this one. Please amend the plan to fund a 21st century park that actually represents the people of Alpine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Board of Supervisors, my name is Eric Ray. I'm a member of the Alpine School Board since 2006. I represent the children of Alpine at all the schools along with their parents and the taxpayers that fund our schools. This. Uh, park is extremely important for the, for the entire community. We don't have a lot of the different access to these types of amenities as other districts do, and this has been in plans for years, decades, as other speakers have said. 30% of our children are on some sort of subsidy for school lunch. So they don't have access to these types of amenities when other kids can go to clubs, can go to different pieces of um, activities throughout the county. These kids need a place to go. The district is specifically looking to improve the wellness of children, especially after COVID. We've hired a social worker to help enhance their overall educational experience while educating them as best we can in order for them to, to, be, to prosper as adults. But a park will help allow them to actually thrive in school, especially on weekends. And if you go to any park in San Diego County, you will see families there with their kids enjoying that park and using those facilities. This is a benefit for our district, a benefit for the community, and I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, and thank you for hearing our comments. My name is Lisa Vincent. My pronouns are she, her. I live in Vista on the stolen land of the Kumaye people. I'm also president of Showing Up for Racial Justice North County. I'm here to, to voice my support for full funding of the 24-7 operation of the MCRT program throughout San Diego County, including North County and North Coastal area. Prior to moving here, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, where I worked in public safety for 15 years. I was a crisis counselor for the Phoenix Fire Department Crisis Response Program and a 911 dispatcher. The Phoenix CR program has been extraordinarily successful. Teams assist community members experiencing many different types of crises, including codes, house fires, drownings, sexual assault, and mental health emergencies, among others. The CR program is now utilized throughout the Phoenix metro area. They're dispatched by 911 and run out of fire stations. These teams enable law enforcement and fire department personnel to stay in service while providing the crisis needs for the community. I think it's a wonderful idea for us to include MCRT in the program here, and I think that we need to include all of the county, including North County. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Holly Herring. I live in District 5. I'm a homeless outreach worker in the North Coastal region. I work extensively with our unsheltered San Diegans in the streets, canyons, riverbeds, and in other encampments. During my duties, I relied heavily upon the extremely professional services of the MCRT. It is an invaluable resource and an exceptional alternative to law enforcement involvement, which has, in my experience, served mainly to heighten the tensions in an existing crisis situation. The people I work with have often had nothing but negative interactions with law enforcement, so anyone in a uniform carrying a baton and a gun will set a person who's already in crisis, who's already had negative experiences with these uniformed officers into a more heightened state. And that will often lead them into a fight, flight, or free state, which is never a good state to be in around law enforcement. Law enforcement should not need to handle a mental health emergency. We should be using skilled mental health professionals for that, who are able to provide follow-up care and case management through MCRT, complete with peer support specialists. Please fully fund and expand this program. Also, please fully fund the pilot program to add 10 social workers to North County. This is a fantastic use of funds to resolve our community members' homelessness as these workers go right to the people, not setting an expectation that people come looking and asking for assistance at an office. The North County services are spread out far and wide from Encinitas all the way to Escondido, so transportation is a huge barrier to receiving services. This is a highly effective person-centered approach that is well received by the people receiving the services. I know because I do this every day, and I know that the people I work with need the help of a social services professional to navigate this complicated pathway to housing. Having a group of professionals who deliver a uniform professional service, heavily implementing our countywide HMS, HMIS system, can identify our region's most vulnerable population and prioritize services to them. Please fully fund this program. <coughs> Thank you. As the next speaker is approaching the podium, I'll call for the, uh, the other group of five speakers, Nikki Fadick, David Garcias, Aaron Shook, Robin Sales. And again, you may approach the podium in any order. Thank you. Good evening, Chair, Board of Supervisors. My name is Yousef Miller. I'm with the North County Equity and Justice Coalition, and I'm here to ask for a full and generous funding of the MCRT. Earlier, before COVID, the district attorney did a study, the blueprint of mental health reform, which told us that people with mental health issues die within zero minutes of interaction with law enforcement. What does this mean? Within seconds, people with mental health crisis, once they come in contact with law enforcement, has lost their life. I'm asking each and every one of you to strike a blow for mental health justice and mental health reform and mental health support. This is critical. We did not need in the community the blueprint of mental health reform to inform us of this tragedy. This tragedy is expressed through Alfred Alongo in, in El Cajon. It is expressed through Vito Vitale in Little Italy. It is expressed with Raul Rivera in South Bay. It is expressed with Dennis Carlino in San Diego. It is expressed with Stephen Olson in North County, Escondido. We have seen this over and over and over again, and the community is asking for more funding, generous funding, to save lives in this area. If we want to save lives, if we want to strike a blow for justice, we need to fund MCRT. A badge and a gun has never helped mental health crises. It has only taken lives. So we need to make sure that we rule out the badge and the gun when we're taking care of our people in crisis so we can honor the Dennis Carolinos, the Alfred Alongos, the Earl McNeils, the Raul Riveras, the Stephen Olsons, and many more that I can't name. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. It's never enviable to follow Yusuf Miller in speaking. <laughs> Good evening, Chair and Supervisors. My name is Nikki Fadick. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm an organizer with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, and I live in Carlsbad. I'm here today to urge you to fully fund and expand the mobile crisis response team. In a 2019 study, about 25% of all fatal police shootings over the previous six years involved someone who was experiencing a mental health crisis. 
Too often, family members call 911 seeking help for a loved one, only to have that member, family member become a victim of violence themselves. Sadly, I know all too well what results when police interactions unnecessarily escalate. In 2012, my biracial 15-year-old cousin was shot and killed by a police officer in South San Francisco. He was not experiencing a mental health crisis, but the color of his skin and the over-policing of his neighborhood led to a fatal encounter with an officer within less than a minute after he was approached. No one wants these violent outcomes. Our county has the opportunity to do better by its residents who need our support by fully funding the MCRT. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi. Good evening, Chair Fletcher and members of the Board of Supervisors. My name is Robin Sales, and I'm speaking on behalf of a coalition of five North County-based organizations, Encinitas for Equality, North County Equity and Justice Coalition, North County NAACP, Racial Justice Coalition of San Diego, and Showing Up for Racial Justice North County. Thank you for your vision to help create a more appropriate response to those in our community who experience a mental health or behavioral health crisis. Under the leadership of Chair Fletcher, you established the Mobile Crisis Response Team program. Supervisor Lawson Reamer recognized several gaps in the proposed program that needed to be filled to increase the availability of the MCRT in the North County Coastal region, as well as create awareness of this important service throughout the county. The board letter of April 6th created the new policy, but the funding was not included in the published budget plan. The funds to operationalize the new policy are essential, and I urge you to adopt a budget change letter to make the funding available, allowing for the planned MCRT program to be available on a 24-7 basis in the North County Coastal Area to conduct a public uh, information and awareness campaign and to create and finalize MOUs with all the law enforcement agencies in the region. These MOUs are essential so that calls for help may be routed to the um, to um, dispatch operators who are properly trained to recognize a mental health crisis and then to access those uh, to uh, direct those calls to the appropriate agency, which would be the MCRT. This is one of the most important priorities for our groups. We ask to complete the task you began by adding the funding to the final budget as envisioned in the board letter. Thank you very much. Thank you. As the next speaker is approaching the podium, I'll call for the remaining speakers in person. Stephanie Johnston, Johnstone, Nicole Wall, Mauricio Medina, Andy McLeod, Tom Packard, and Apostol Wall. You may come forward in any order. Thank you, Chair Fletcher and Board of Supervisors. My name is Aaron Shook. I'm a resident of Encinitas in District 3. I'm here today to speak in support of fully funding the MCRT program. Having the option to dispatch an MCRT team when our citizens are in the time of crisis is a major step forward in public health and public safety. It supports the health of the public by giving them the type of help they need when they need it the most. People who aren't a danger to themselves or others need professionals trained in mental health and steps to a better life, which is what we want for these valued members of our community. These MCRT teams also create the opportunity for law enforcement and the fire department to be available to respond where their skills and training are needed the most. This creates a win-win situation by triaging the right services and greatly reduces the burden on our public safety resources. As a frontline worker, I have seen both sides of this coin and I'm here to say that programs like the MCRT are a major step forward in public health and public safety. Let's continue to lead in the safety and health of our citizens. Let's continue to be an example of what public health and safety can and should be. Please vote to fully fund the MCRT. Thank you for your time. Thank you, next speaker, please. Hello, good evening. Um, hi, my name is Stephanie Johnstone. I am from Reopen San Diego. I'm also a San Diego native. I am a registered nurse and an EMT. I've worked in the EMS uh, system here in San Diego, 911, and in Santa Clara County. 
Um, so I'd like to address a few things that uh, came up at the Board of Supervisors meeting on 6-8-2021 regarding AB 262, AB 389, AB 988, and CMS 911-5-F. San Diego County Health Officers are requiring law enforcement to ensure compliance with their order that businesses and government entities must ascertain vaccination status of all personnel. The health officer requests that the sheriffs and all the chiefs of police in the county and all enforcement officers ensure compliance and enforce this order. The violation of any provision of this order constitutes an imminent threat and menace to public health constitutes a public nuisance and is punishable by fine, imprisonment, or both. This order is also subject to civil enforcement authority. Our initiative is to stop, mitigate this mandate from being implemented in all counties in California. Employees, employers can be thrown in jail for not harassing their uh, contractors, employees, and vendors about vaccination status. Status. Employers can also be sued civilly for the same mandated activity. Seems like quite the rock and hard place for businesses. No wonder they're fleeing San Diego County. In closing, I do not agree with these bills. And then I'm also asking each and every person on the board um, if I could meet with you in person to discuss further to come up with a better solution. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Andy McLeod. I live in District 3, and I am proud and appreciative of the chance to be here tonight to advocate for a county budget that prioritizes people over profits, effective programs over empty promises, diversity over bias, and safety over harm. I'm here on behalf of the Invest in Families San Diego Coalition and the ACLU of San Diego County, but as co-founder of Showing Up for Racial Justice North County, a member of the North County Equity and Justice Coalition, the Racial Justice Coalition of San Diego, and the NAACP North County, I'm also struck by the strong consensus among all these coalitions for a budget that empowers all of San Diego to live well. Not lobbyists, not special interests, but all of us, your constituents. We believe a fiscally sound budget can also fully fund staff and support the full expansion of MCRT programs in the county, the Immigrant Legal Defense Program, the Office of Labor Enforcement, the Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, the Office of Equity and Racial Justice, the Office of Evaluation, Performance and Analytics, and more. I appreciate so much what has been accomplished in this season of organizing for these offices, and I am here to urge their full funding because I, I believe that we have yet to live into our best iteration of America's finest city, but I believe that with this iteration of the board, we're gonna be in grave danger of doing that, and I really support that. Um, do I have any time left? You've got seven seconds. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Good evening, Chair Fletcher, Vice Chair Vargas, and Supervisors. My name is Mauricio Medina, and I'm the Public Affairs Manager for the San Diego Hunger Coalition. I'm here today to urge you to support and fully fund Make the County Work for All, being championed by the Office of Supervisor Lawson Reamer. This program is critical because all San Diegans should be able to access benefits for which they are eligible. We need to address barriers to access and enrollment in county self-sufficiency programs. The San Diego Hunger Coalition understands the importance that these programs, spe specifically CalFresh, play in reducing nutrition insecurity in San Diego County. We must guarantee that the county continues to invest in key areas that strengthen our community and support our most vulnerable, our most vulnerable population. Thank you for your time and consideration. Next speaker, please. Members of the board, my name is Tom Packard. I live in Encinitas, and I'm a professor emeritus in social work at SDSU and a member of North County um, showing up for racial justice. 
I strongly urge you to support plans to implement the mobile crisis response team countywide with 24-7 coverage and quick integration with the 911 system. The North Coastal pilot should be included with the 24-7 coverage and the 911 integration. I also strongly encourage you to support uh, adequate uh, services of the agencies that are used as referral sources for the MCRTs so that they can provide comprehensive, immediate, and ongoing services. This system of non-law enforcement response with full follow-through through the human service agencies should enhance the quality of life for many in the county and prevent unnecessary and inappropriate law enforcement involvement. Thank you for your attention and your vision and for your support of the excellent plans of your Health and Human Service Agency. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Chair Fletcher and County Board of Supervisors. My name is Molly Woodstrake. I'm a resident of Encinitas in District 3. I'm also the president of Encinitas for Equality. I want to first thank you for your leadership in keeping us safe through the pandemic and the equity-based budget you have proposed. I'm here today to urge you to fully fund and expand the MCRT program as well as the Immigration Defense Fund. As a woman in long-term recovery with a history of anxiety disorder and depression, I know firsthand how important it is to have licensed professionals respond to urgent mental health needs. I've been fortunate and privileged to have incredible access to mental health care but it has never lost on me that my genetic predisposition for mental health disorders could have easily led me to be unhoused, institutionalized, and at the mercy of county or government care. When someone is in crisis, they should be able to call someone they trust. I want to be confident that when there's an urgent need for mental health interventions, the person who comes to my side, my neighbors, and my community side is someone we can trust to have the training and experience to provide necessary services in the immediate moment and to get connected to treatment. Everyone in our community deserves access to equitable and compassionate treatment. That is why the mobile crisis response team is a welcome and essential investment from our community. In regards to the Immigration Defense Fund, I'm going to read a poem by Warson Shire and I'll get cut off when my time expires. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbors running faster than you breathe, bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the old tin factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you. Fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. And even then, you carried the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in an airport toilet. My time's going to be up. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Chair and Vice Chair and all the citizens here in San Diego County. Um, my name is Apostle Daryl G. Wall. It's not a hard word. It just means a post. And it's all a post, to, like a messenger from the king. Anyway, um, I'm here telling my story. I'm here with my daughter here. She lives in, um, what did you do? Uh, I think it's City Heights. And um, I was, I'm a veteran. My family served in the military since 1776. There's a wall on the military roles every war we've been in. Um, I had a VASH VA, and I'm my, my, my concern is uh, we're coming out of a pandemic, and uh, I think it's be wise for the city, the county of San Diego, to to expand the uh, renters' assistance. Uh, my story is that after six years in the same house, uh, paying the landlord and increasing the value of his home uh, to two times the value of it when I moved in, uh, he wasn't obligated to give me any relocation expense. So after he sold the house that he paid um, 115,000 to renovate, and he sold it for 230,000, um, I got no relocation funding, although I had a new voucher to move. It had a 50% increase in what I was paying in my current rent. So I didn't have the $3,000 for the $1,500 first and last. So um, it, it would be wise for the county of San Diego to look at that to see what we do as the California budget is being uh, negotiated in Sacramento for by June 30th into the fiscal year that you look at that and we've got another year before the fallout of what's going to happen to those who have been not paying rent until June 30th, July 1st. You need to extend that time. I appreciate you letting me have time. I'm um, working on something for the African-American community. 
Uh, there are 43.5 million African Americans, and the Church of God in Christ I'm part of, we're 8.8 uh, million, which is 20% of the African Americans in America. We're building houses across all 435 congressional districts for part of the reparations, uh, privately funded. Thank you for the time. Next speaker, please. Always following my father is not always easy. My name is Janaea Nicole Wall. As he said, he's my father. Um, I'm here today because I am a member of ACE. And I want y'all to get a good look at me right now. So now you see me, my disability. Our issue is the emergency funding for tenants. It's about to be gone. And of course, the pandemic, the urgency is over, but the recovery process, it's not gonna magically, money gonna fall from the sky, people are gonna have money coming in, they're gonna be able to pay the bills tomorrow come J July 1st. That's not gonna happen. People are going back to work. So guess what? If you're on a bi-weekly payroll, you don't get paid for three weeks. If you're on a weekly payroll, you don't get paid for two weeks. So what's gonna happen? What about those people that have medical conditions like me? who's trying to make a decision between medical care or try to pay my rent and not be out on the street, because if I don't pay my rent, my chances of death is imminent. I'm a diabetic. Right now, I'm battling wound issues in the bottom of my feet. So if I lose my house tomorrow, the chance of me living leaves my child an orphan. Even though he's grown, he still would have not a parent. He's always lost one. So my thing is, we're asking the County Board of Supervisors, to really look at protecting tenants. We need protection. We need that protection. You protect property owners, but your constituents need you to protect them. There need to be accountability to landlords for misusing, abusing, and harassing tenants in this crisis while we're trying to come back together and be a better California. I'm a granddaughter of a president, Ulysses S. Grant. And to see for where my family comes from, to see what this country started as, and to see the deplorable how we treat each other is unacceptable. So I'm asking you all to make sure the tenants of San Diego County are protected. Thank you. We'll now hear from those that requested to speak by phone. Any members of the public that requested to uh, address the board on the proposed, the recommended operational plan, please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will be calling speakers by the last four digits of their phone number. You'll hear notification that your call has been unmuted. You will then need to press star six to unmute your phone. We'll ask you to please state your name for the audio record. And I'll remind the callers that they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And when you're finished speaking, uh, please hang up from the conference line to make room for other callers. You may continue to watch or listen to the board meeting online or through the call and listen line. Information is posted on the clerk of the board's website at www.sandiegocob.com. And if you could please identify the first caller. Our first caller is 1043. 1043, please press star six to unmute. 1043. Please press star six to unmute. We'll come back to that caller. Our next caller is 5288. 5288, please press star six to unmute. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. My name is Rebecca and I'm proud to call on behalf of the ACLU San Diego and the ISDF Coalition. After years of advocacy by ISDF partners, this new Board of Supervisors has finally listened to our community. I want to thank the supervisors that are responsible for leading these changes. You already know who you are. These new investments will help us a lot, but we know more work is needed. As we have heard right now, there is no information on how the Sheriff's Department spends $1 billion of our money. We stand with ISDF and ask the supervisors to call for an audit of the Sheriff's Department budget. We have a unique opportunity to alter the budget in a way that begins to dismantle the racist structures of policing and incarceration. We are on the right track, but let's not lose sight of the long-term goals here. Please continue to support transparency within the Sheriff's Department and the structured redirecting of funding to meaningful, effective social programs. Thank you for supporting a Sheriff's Department audit, and please remember, 
Failure to reveal the sheriff's budget now will be a loss for San Diego families. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 8046. 8046, please press star six to unmute. Good evening, uh, Chair and Board. Uh, this is Noah Harris, Policy Advocate with Climate Action Campaign. The most up-to-date climate science shows that we are not moving fast enough to flash emissions towards zero carbon, which is necessary to stave off the most devastating impacts of the climate crisis, which have and will impact low-income communities and communities of color first and worst. I'm calling in support of full funding for the Regional Sustainability Plan, the Climate Action Plan, um, the Environmental Justice Office, and other key climate and environmental justice items identified by this new board. The county must take bold, unprecedented action at every level of government to stop the climate emergency, and we urge you to secure a more equitable climate safe future through this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 8170. 8170, please press star six to unmute. 8170. 8170, por favor, o de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Eight one seven zero, please press star six to unmute. Ocho uno siete cero. Tiene que oprimir las tres. Hello, my. Sí, adelante. Hello, my my. Hello, my name is Maria, and I'm proud to call on behalf of ACE and uh, and the ISDS coalition. Thank you, Board of Supervisors, for listening to our community. I especially want to thank Supervisor Vargas. Lothar Remer and Fletcher for your leadership and the work you have done to begin reversing years of damage. Our communities will greatly benefit for the policies and investments you have helped us this past, this past in San Diego County this past year. Thank you for supporting the Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Support of Labor Standards Enforcement and Immigrant Legal Defense Program this year. Please ensure that these items are fully funded in the final draft of the budget to support our communities. While these investments will help us a lot, we know that more work is needed. Right now, the county is spending more money on the Cherries Department than any other county department, and there is no information on where one billion of our money is going. We stand with ISDS and ask the supervisors to stand with us and call for an Audi on the, on, the, on the Cherry's Department budget. We want to make sure we know where our money is going as much as our county funds are, as possible. Should we go into programs and services that, that our communities need, such as more affordable housing and protection for tenants? Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 3640. 3640. Please press star six to unmute. 3640. Yes. Uh, hi. My name is uh, David Garcias. I'm the president of SEIU Local 221. And I am honored uh, to be here and a part of, and I'm also a part of the uh, Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. You know, after years of uh, advocacy by SEIU and our coalition, this new board of supervisors has shown that you actually listen to your, co your workforce and our community. And the proposed budget reflects uh, a response to years of understaffing and underinvestment in our community. We support the investment in areas such as healthcare detention eligibility, behavioral health, CWS, and of course, hazard pay and more. I also want to add our support to critical items such as the Office of Immigrant Services and the Office of Labor and Standards. We urge the board and CAO to focus on staffing and hiring for Edgemore staff, paralegals in the public defenders office and other areas where we have been historically understaffed. We also would like the board to use state funding, not just to backfill existing jobs, but to add further investment and alleviate staffing and service issues. 
Furthermore, our members are committed to engage with county staff to ensure that all positions are filled and that they are dedicated to support frontline staff and not just add management positions. Although there is always more work to be done, we commend this board on the best budget in a generation and look forward to progress for SEIU members and our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next caller is 5755. 5755, please press star six to unmute. Uh, good evening, Chair Fletcher, Vice Chair Vargas, and the Board of Supervisors. My name is Crystal Irving, pronouns she, her, hers. I've served as a protective services worker for nearly eight years. And as a proud SEIU Local 221 member and part of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition, we have been advocating for an equitable budget that addresses the needs of our workers and our communities. Uh, my coworkers and I have sacrificed during this pandemic to provide quality service day in and day out during a time that will be described in history books as historic trauma. My union members have been sharing our stories with the board and I'm happy to see your commitment to funding hazard pay and teleworking stipends and providing more staffing for critical programs such as self-sufficiency, child welfare services, and the psychiatric hospital. It is my hope that those positions will be established for workers and not just higher level management because after all, we need more legs and not a bigger head. I also stand in solidarity with the other members of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition, advocating for the Office of Labor Standard and Enforcement and Immigrant and Refugee Affairs, and to ensure that people are able to remain housed as we come out of this pandemic. Uh, there are some things that still must be addressed. The staffing crisis at Edgemore Hospital, mandatory overtimes in the detention centers, and increasing paralegals in our public defender's office. Uh, while we know that allocating staff positions and hiring staff is important, we must also focus on how we will retain them. And that is competitive wages and benefits that allow us to thrive and a workplace culture that keeps us motivated and engaged. And we're definitely looking forward to advocating for this in the future. I'm grateful for the new leadership of this board and for the actions that you are already taking to move us into the 21st century. Um, I ask that you approve the CAO's recommended operational plan and keep all the items that ISDS Coalition has successfully advocated for, as well as these items that are still pressing and pending. So please vote yes on this item uh, to ensure a better San Diego County for us employees, as well as the families and communities that we serve. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 3083. 3083. Please press star 6 to unmute. 3083. Favor de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, adelante. Buenas noches. Uh, mi nombre es María Flores. Soy miembro de ACE y de Invierta en las Familias de San Diego. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Maria Flores. I'm a member of ACE as well as the ISDF Coalition, and I live in Vista, California. Y quiero agradecer especialmente a los supervisores Vargas y Lawson Rimer y Fletcher por su liderazgo y el trabajo que han realizado. I would like to especially thank Supervisors Vargas, Lawson Reamer, and Fletcher for their leadership and the work that they have accomplished. Nuestras comunidades se han beneficiado enormemente de las políticas y las inversiones que ustedes han apoyado en el condado de San Diego en este año. Our communities have benefited enormously from the work and the from the policies and investments that you have made um, throughout the year in San Diego County. Quiero pedirles que incluyan el dinero en programas de ayuda legal para inmigrantes nuevamente. I would like to ask that you also include um, additional funds for help for uh, the legal the immigrant legal defense fund. Uh, que para mí es muy importante y para mi comunidad como inmigrante necesitamos la ayuda de tener un abogado para defender nuestros derechos. It's very important for me and my community. We need the help of, a, of lawyers to help defend our rights. Sabemos que estas nuevas inversiones ayudarán mucho y sabemos que hay mucho trabajo por hacer. 
We hope that these new investments can help a lot of people, and we know that there's still a lot of work to do. Eh, sabemos que uh, están invirtiendo mucho dinero en el departamento de Cherif y no hay información sobre dónde uh, se destina un millón de dólares de nuestro dinero. We know that you're investing a lot of money in the San Diego Sheriff's Office, and there is not a whole lot of information about where a million of our dollars are going to. Queremos asegurarnos de saber dónde se está yendo nuestro dinero. We would like to make sure that we know where our money is going to. Queremos que inviertan más en nuestras comunidades o en programas para nuestros jóvenes o viviendas económicas para no tener una larga lista en la sección 8. We would like for you to invest more money in our communities in programs for youth or for affordable housing so that we don't have such a long section 8 list. Ya que si tendremos jóvenes uh, preparados, ya no habrá más crimen y no necesitaremos más policía. And, of course, if we prepare our youth better, then there won't be as much crime and we will not need as many police. Gracias a todos y espero contar con sus ayudas. Thank you, everyone, and I hope to count on your support. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Our next caller is 1128. 1128, please press star six to unmute. 1128, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next speaker is 3478. Three, 3478, three, please press star six to unmute. Three, four, seven, eight. We Hi. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Kyle Ogle, and I'm a resident of Alpine. My wife grew up in Alpine, and we're happy to be raising our family here. Uh, our family moved to Alpine from the Silicon Valley, and we came here in order to escape the busy uh, city life and enjoy the um, beautiful sunsets, the dark skies, everything that, uh, that Alpine really has to offer. We were aware that the County Department of Parks and Recreation was planning to do to the, develop a small park. However, um, and, we, and we were hopeful that this park would be done in a way that honored the space um, that we understood the community and that the Alpine Community Planning Group wanted to support where there were some picnic tables, a um, small parking lot, and some trash cans, and just a, a really small, nice park. However, uh, we're extremely unhappy to learn that the county is proposing a 26-acre active recreation park just to meet a ma uh, matrix, uh, while utterly disregarding the community and what we, we, what we really wanted for decades. The size of the park would increase traffic, noise, and also be a safety concern. It is discouraging that the county would choose to develop this land over a smaller-sized passive park to honor and maintain the integrity of the space, especially in light of the county's priority to preserve open spaces and develop a sound climate, climate action plan, and according to Governor Newsom's 30 by 30 plan. I request that the Board of Supervisors does not approve the money for this park to go into this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 6872. 6872, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Grace Martinez, and I'm calling from ACE, the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, as well as the Invest in San Diego, um, Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. Um, I'm calling in support of our ISDF demands, but also really raising up the, um, the massive transformation that many of, us have, uh, many of us have witnessed in the last six months because of this new Board of Supervisors. Um, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer, Supervisor Nora Vargas, thank you so much for all the work that you've done. Um, and San Diego, you reversed in, I guess, in six months some of the damage that um, that has been caused because of the lack of political will 
and in action. And then as we move forward, I hope that we can continue this pathway towards making sure that San Diego works for everyone, especially our working class, most impacted families and tenants. Um, we do, you know, we are, I am still calling in support of additional um, funding asks to make sure that we really have a generous funding for the mobile crisis response team, as well as fully fund um, the deportation fund for undocumented immigrants and make sure that there's real legal, um, free legal assistance and resources for, for undocumented immigrants while they go through a lot of the legal processes. But this is a step in the right direction. Um, I hope we can count on your support on this. But thank you again. Um, the work that you've done in the last six months has been transformational. And for tenants, thousands of tenants right now are being protected because of the ban and all the work that you've done and all the work, hopefully, that you'll continue to do. But thank you. Um, and please support the ISDS demand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next caller will be nine seven. Sorry, zero nine five zero zero nine five zero. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Karen Moreno. Karen Moreno, me dijo, señora. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Karen Moreno. Adelante. Y yo soy y yo soy miembro de ACE de la coalición de ACE del sur de California. I'm a member of ACE, uh, ACE Coalition in South California. Quisiera agradecerles a todos los supervisores del condado por toda la ayuda que han dado a todos los inquilinos y en toda su labor. I would like to thank all the members of the board uh, for everything that they have done, you know, as far as the tenants, for all your work. También quisiera este, invitar a la Junta de Supervisores que pudieran asignar un poco más de presupuesto para el condado para ayudar a todas las personas inquilinas que necesiten la ayuda ahorita. And I would like to ask um, the Board of Supervisors to go ahead and increase the budget for those persons that are tenants that really need the help. Así como también se hace que se asigne el dinero para el sheriff, ya que la, la seguridad pública es muy importante. And also to allocate funds for the sheriffs uh, because that is very important that, you know, help from the sheriffs is something that is very important. Ya que nuestras familias, tanto como la mía, como la de ustedes, necesitamos ayuda que es tan valiosa para nosotros. Necesitamos mucho de que nos apoyen en las cosas que necesitamos ahorita invirtiendo en nuestras familias inmigrantes o no inmigrantes. Um, because our families, as well as yours, you know, we need those things. We need to value, you know, all the things that we need, especially for those, for our immigrants, people that are immigrants and those who are not. Muchísimas gracias por todo y esperemos que contamos con su ayuda. Gracias. Thank you very much for everything and we're hoping that can, we can count with your help. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 8847. 8847, please press star six to unmute. Hi, Dr. Cyrus Barucha. I'm a resident of District 3. And as a proud American, I urge you to properly fund the Immigrant Legal Defense Program. I need to know that our legal systems operate in a just manner for all who are under their jurisdiction. Others have already noted that our system leaves immigrants to go unrepresented in immigration proceedings, navigating on their own an extremely complicated process that has dire consequences for their lives. But I ask you to consider, in addition to what it means for our refugees and other immigrants, what does it mean for us as Americans? Access to legal guidance is fundamental to fairness and justice. When immigrants go unrepresented in our tribunals, it's an affront to us and our legal system I request that you ensure that the Immigrant Legal Defense Program is fully funded. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller will be 9719. 9719, please press star six to unmute. 9719. Sí. Uh, hola, muy buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. 
Uh, sí, hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Javier, soy miembro de ACE. Good afternoon, my name is Javier and I'm a member of ACE. Y llamo para, antes que nada, uh, primero decirle gracias a la Junta de Supervisores por escuchar a nuestras comunidades. Quiero agradecer especialmente a los uh, supervisores a uh, Nora Vargas, Lawson Rimmer, a uh, Fletcher, Nathan Fletcher, uh, por su liderazgo y el trabajo que han realizado. Um, thank you. Before I get started this evening, I would like to first thank the Board of Supervisors for really listening to our community, especially Supervisor Vargas, Lawson Rimmer, and Fletcher for their leadership and the work that they have done. Um, nuestras comunidades se, benef uh, se benefician enormemente de las políticas e inversiones que ustedes han ayudado a aprobar en el condado de San Diego este año. Our communities have benefited enormously from the policies and investments that you have helped um, get approved this year. Gracias por apoyar el programa del equipo móvil de respuesta a la crisis. Thank you for supporting the MCRT program. La oficina uh, de normas laborales y el programa de defensa legal para inmigrantes este año. The Labor Enforcement Standards Office and the Immigrant Defense Fund. Les pido de que estos elementos estén totalmente financiados uh, en el borrador final del presupuesto apoyar a nuestras comunidades. I ask that you fully fund the, um, the offices I mentioned and the programs that I mentioned in your final draft of your budget to help support our community. Si bien, estas, uh -huh. si bien nuevas, uh, uh, estas nuevas inversiones nos ayudarán mucho, sabemos uh, que se necesita más trabajo and even though we know that these new investments will help us a lot, we know that there's still a lot of work to be done. En este momento, el condado está gastando más dinero en el departamento del sheriff uh, que, en, que en cualquier otro departamento del condado. Y no hay información sobre dónde se destinan. This very moment, the county is spending more money in the sheriff's department than any other department in the county, and there's not a lot of information about where that money is going. Que es la cantidad un billón de dólares. It's actually a million dollars that we don't know where it's going. Apoyamos a ISDF y les pedimos a los supervisores que nos apoyen y soliciten una auditoría del presupuesto del Departamento del Aguacil. We support ISDF, and we ask that you support us as we request a full audit of the San Diego Sheriff's Office. Queremos asegurarnos también de que a dónde va nuestro dinero. Because we want to make sure that we are here and we know where our money is going. Y por favor, este, con eso de apoyo para uh, este dinero para la uh, de defensa legal para inmigrantes, por favor, les pedimos uh, personalmente este y otras personas más que somos inmigrantes, les pido por favor que, que ayuden, apoyen esta, esta ley para que nos ayuden a muchos inmigrantes ya que es muy difícil a uh, nosotros tratar un abogado. Gracias. And um, also, personally, and on behalf of a lot of immigrants, I would like to ask that you fully support the Immigrant Defense Fund, um, because sometimes, for a lot of times, it's very hard for us to find a lawyer. Um, thank you very much, and have a good evening. Thank you. Our next caller is 7683. 7683, please press star six to unmute. 7683. Good evening. My name is Andrea Rodriguez, and I'm a resident of District 3. And I'm calling tonight on behalf of the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial Counties and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. Overspending on police and incarceration limits the resources that are available for the programs and services that our community really needs. 
like the Immigrant Legal Defense Program, the Office of Labor Standards, and the Mobile Crisis Response Team. To ensure transparency and accountability of how public dollars are being used, I support the request for an audit of the sheriff's budget to be conducted by the county within the next 180 days, which should include the components outlined in the letter submitted to the Board of Supervisors by the ISDF Coalition this week. We stand with invest in San Diego families, and we ask the supervisors to please stand with us and call for an audit of the sheriff's department's budget. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 2674. 2674, please press star six to unmute. Hi, uh, my name is Julie. I'm a resident of District 3. Um, I'm proud to call in on behalf of uh, the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial Counties and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. After decades of underinvestment that starved county services and programs, this new Board of Supervisors has taken unprecedented steps to begin rebuilding and shaping the priorities represented in our county budget, such as creating an immigrant legal defense fund and making phone calls for incarcerated San Diego free. I do want to thank you for that. However, a lot of work still needs to be done. Despite many new investments, the county is continuing to overfund policing and incarceration. Increasing the number of sworn officers and jail construction projects represent a continued investment in the racist systems of policing and incarceration. We oppose the county's budget allocation for more than 100 additional officers for the county's jail system. We ask that the county reject this proposal and instead develop a clear plan for shrinking our jail population and diverting as many people as possible to alternative programs. Incarcerating people doesn't solve the issues that our communities face, such as poverty, lack of access to health care, et cetera. To ensure transparency and, and accountability of how public dollars are being used, the Board of Supervisors should call for an audit of the sheriff's budget that must be conducted by the county within the next 180 days. This audit should include, but not be limited to, the components shared in a letter submitted to the board by the ISDF coalition this week, in addition to any additional information requested by the public in the next 60 days. We stand with ISDF and ask the supervisors to stand with us and call for an audit of the sheriff's department's budget. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 2161. 2161, please press star six to unmute. Uh, good evening. My name is David Islas, and I'm a resident of District 8 and a member of Youth Will and of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. I'm speaking in support of the Youth Environment Recreation Corps that will provide low-income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness. In the growing sector of the green economy, every youth in our region deserves the opportunity to thrive, especially in regions where opportunities that benefit both the community and the individual are scarce or rarely promoted by the organization they work in. By amplifying systems in our county, we can make sure we reach youth across the region. I also want to thank Supervisors Austin, Reamer, Vargas, and Fletcher for your leadership this budget cycle and the work you have done to be in. Reversing years of damage through the policies and investments you helped pass in San Diego County this year. In addition to the Youth Corps program, I ask that you please ensure that the Mobile Crisis Response Teams, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, and Immigrant Legal Defense Program this year are fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as ISDS request for an independent audit of the sheriff's budget. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 1043. 1043, please press star six to unmute. Hello, Maria Wollner, uh, RNBSN, uh, county, county San Diego resident, and also a member of Reopen San Diego. Um, I wanted to draw some attention to your framework for the future, equity, fairness, and justness. Basically being um, all buzzwords related to Agenda 21, which is on our radar, and we will be scrutinizing um, many of these. Um, budget proposals that you have moving forward. I'd also like to say per Dr. Um, per Tara Lawson Raymer's words, integrate, um, you'll be, your new budget will account for integrating data evaluation and evidence-based policymaking 
evidence-based policy making all that we do. So using $226.9 million for continued testing for 80% of San Diego population of vaccinated people, if the vaccines are working, why do we need to continue to test? Um, it seems like a neat point considering that the PCR testing is fraudulent testing in the first place. Treatment, um, you know, allocating money for that treatment also is not using hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin as first-line mechanisms of treatment, which I have been 300 peer-reviewed articles of efficacy in treatment. So you need to actually make these drugs available in San Diego County for pharma pharmacists and prescribing physicians. And tracing efforts. If also, I don't think there needs to be any tracing efforts. No monetary funds need to be going towards this. If 80% of vaccinated people, um, you know, if their vaccines are effective and safe, um, there's a 99.98 chance of survival, even if you catch it naturally with a natural immunity. So I don't think tracing efforts and spreading of this disease is, is needed in a budgetary uh, commitment. And then according to AB 262, I would also like more clarification on that as to how um, the powers are going to be given to the public health officer. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 2625. 2625, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Mary. I'm a staff person at Aging and Independent Services at the county and an essential employee. I, I was calling in to support the equity and hazard pay for teleworkers. We were sent home with, uh, with used equipment, had to beg for the tools we need to do the job, and then told if our, we lose connection, we have to use personal time. I find all of this unacceptable acceptable. Um, we don't get a lot of support with our leadership. Um, and, um, and, and I just feel like all the teleworkers have a passion for what we do and kept services going in our group with higher productivity than in the office. Um, so please support uh, equity pay hazard pay, and uh, more staffing in frontline working. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 2438. 2438, please press star six to unmute. 2438. Good evening, my name is Esmeralda Flores. I'm a policy advocate with the ASLU of San Diego and Imperial County. The ASLU is a proud member of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition and the Coalition for Police Accountability and mm -hmm. Transparency. We are here to urge you to oppose additional funding for 114 foreign law enforcement officers and jail construction projects. And we urge you to fund an independent audit of the San Diego County Sheriff's Department's financial expenditures. The county spends $1 billion annually on the Sheriff's Department, more than any other department within San Diego County. We saw important changes this budget cycle. This new Board of Supervisors has taken unprecedented steps in rebuilding and reshaping the priorities represented in the county budget. We want to especially thank Supervisors Vargas, Lassen Rimmer, and Fletcher for your leadership in creating a budget that better reflects the needs of San Diego. Instead of expanding the Sheriff's Department budget, the county should expand and invest in initiatives that improve the health and well-being of communities throughout the county. These funds can support and sustain new programs that care for, rather than criminalize, marginalized county residents. San Diego County can thrive if elected officials establish a budget that is transparent, diverts from law enforcement, and builds and sustains systems of care for county residents, and aligns with people's shared values of racial justice and equity. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next caller is 9618. 9618, please press star six to unmute. Hi, thank you. My name is Patrick Williams. I'm a, a research geologist and I live in Alpine. I'm calling on the board to remove development funding for the proposed 26 acre Alpine County Park until substantial issues with the park are resolved. Essential issues include geology. Wright Field is a geological heritage site. 
the site of the park is an 80 million year old riverbed, um, a relic of the ancient uh, Laguna Mountains, and is very likely the oldest landscape feature in Southern California, the uh, ancient meander of a very powerful river. Uh, biology, the San Diego County previously declared that development of the California native grassland habitat <clears throat> of the park property could not be mitigated. That was relative to the Alpine High School site search in 2009. And more recently said, it's an inappropriate location for an active sports park. The park footprint removes at least half of the California native grassland <clears throat> on the county property. The location of the proposed park is deemed in the county's own study uh, dated 2020 uh, to pose the, one of the worst wildland urban interface conditions in the County of San Diego <clears throat> and is a known location of repetitious wildfire occurrence. Such locations, in their words, are known as historical wildfire corridors. Evacuating 300 vehicles from an already congested neighborhood in which roads asserted all evacuation routes may be cut off by fire spread is remarkably concerning. Detailed measurement of the version two parking corridors indicates up to 350 standard nine foot wide parking spaces and space suitable for 11 bus park parked. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 6048, 6048. Please press star six to unmute. 6048, oprima la estrella seis para poder hablar. Hello, buenas, buenas noches. Ah, ¿Algo eh, me llamo Jesús. ¿Cuál es su nombre? Me llamo Jesús Martínez. Yes, good evening. Mi nombre es Jesús Martínez. And my name is Jesús yes. Martínez. Eh, soy soy uh, miembro del ACE para uh, uh, agradecer a, a todos la, los que están trabajando, realizando ayuda para los inquilinos hasta ahora. And I am, uh, I'm a member of ACE, and I am very thankful to those that are working, you know, uh, helping the tenants. Adelante, señor. Eh, pero, sí, pero también para... Eh, para instar a, a la Junta de Supervisión del Condado a seguir más dinero para el presupuesto del Condado para ayudar a los inquilinos que lo necesiten. But I also, um, you know, would like to continue uh, as the Board of Supervisors to help continue as the tenants that need it. Eh, eso es importante para mí. That is very important for me. Voy a contar mi historia brevemente. I'm briefly going to tell you my story. Yo yo perdí mi mi trabajo en 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 agosto y no por la pandemia y casi pierdo mi mi apartamento. No había trabajo. And what happened is I lost my job in August, and that's due to the pandemic. And I also almost lost my apartment because there was no work. Y, y, y también uh, eh, el desempleo tardó mucho para que yo podría agarrar, agarrar dinero. Also, en realidad, mm -hmm. tres meses sin, sin agarrar dinero. And also, the Office of Unemployment took a long time before I was able to get some money. It took three, it took three months. Y, y, y para muchas familias, ahorita es muy importante la ayuda que pueda recibir acerca de, de la, la, por la renta. And, um, you know, a lot of money, a lot of money is very, very important, you know, uh, for us to be able to get help as far as our rent. Y para, la, y para las personas siempre necesitan más servicios para inquilinos para seguir de lo que para que no se aprovechen de ellos de los las, las compañías de renta. 
And also, I think that us as tenants, we need a lot of help. We need a lot of help. So these companies that uh, give you rentals, the ones that are in charge of the rentals, don't take advantage of us. I also would like to thank you uh, for listening to me. And good night. Thank you. Our next caller will be 4128. 4128, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Sarah with Mass Pace and part of the ISDF coalition. I urge the board to fully fund these three programs of services, Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, and Immigrant and Legal Defense Fund. Also to audit the Sheriff's Department budget. We need more government transparency, more public accountability, and less incarceration and policing. Our county spends over $1 billion on the Sheriff. That's more than any other department. The Sheriff is still proposing budget increases and additional staffing. It's time for change. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 4005. 4005, please press star six to unmute. 4005, please press star six to unmute. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for the time to speak to you all. I would like to go ahead and make my opinions known very briefly. First, I would like to say I'm calling on behalf of Planned Parenthood and the ISDF coalition. I'd like to please, I'd like it if you'd please support the pilot program to expand access to doulas in San Diego County. Doulas support better maternal health and birth outcomes, which is essentially important to combat health disparities faced by black and indigenous people. It's vital that the county increase access to doulas and address mental health disparities. Thank you very much for your time. I yield the remainder. Sir, can you please state your name for the audio record? I lost that caller. Our next caller is 6770. 6770. Please press star 6 to unmute. 6770. Hi. Yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Rick Bates, and I am a resident of District 1. Uh, as a 20 year resident in San Diego County, I just want to say I'm really excited about uh, so many of the things that I see coming forward uh, with this board of supervisors. Uh, big thank you to Supervisor Nathan Fletcher, Carol Austin Remmer, and also Nora Vargas, uh, just for rising, you know, to meet the moment. And so I, I do share a lot of the same sentiments that I've already heard, so I don't want to uh, just kind of repeat all that, but I just want to express uh, support for just, you know, fully funding uh, all of the sustainability, the environmental, and the equity initiatives uh, including uh, the regional and the departmental sustainability plans, the climate action plan, uh, Office of Environmental Justice, uh, Immigrant Legal Defense Fund, uh, MCRT. And then I would just like to also ask that you also add $150,000 for a consultant for the sustainability uh, reorganization. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is five. 5302, please press star 6 to unmute. 5302, tiene que oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. 5302. Uh, buenas noches, mi nombre es Miriam Goff, residente de Chula Vista. Soy miembro de ACE y de la coalición Invierte San Diego Family. Good evening, my name is Miriam Goff. I'm a resident of Chula Vista. I'm a member of ACE as well as the ISDF coalition. Gracias a la Junta de Supervisores por escuchar a nuestras comunidades. Quiero agradecer especialmente a los supervisores Vargas, Lawson, Rimer y Fleischer por su trabajo que han realizado este año. I would like to thank the Board of Supervisors for listening to the communities, especially Supervisor Vargas, Lawson, Rimer, and Fletcher for your leadership and the work you've done this year. Nuestras comunidades se beneficiarán de las políticas e inversiones que ustedes han ayudado a aprobar en el condado de San Diego. Gracias por apoyar el programa del equipo móvil de respuesta a crisis. Our communities have benefited from the policies and investments you have made this year in San Diego. Thank you for supporting the MCRT program. Uh, por el apoyo a las normas laborales y el programa de defensa legal para inmigrantes este año. Also, for your support on the Labor Standards Enforcement Office and the Immigrant Defense Fund this year. 
les pido que les pido que estos elementos estén totalmente financiados en los presupuestos para apoyar nuestras comunidades. I ask that you fully fund all of the above mentioned things in the final draft of the budget in order to support our communities. Ah, pienso que la mayor par, la mayor parte posible de los fondos de nuestro condado deben destinarse a los programas y servicios que nuestras comunidades necesitan como vivienda más asequible y protecciones para inquilinos. I think that most of the funds should go to programs and services that most benefit our community, such as affordable housing and um, other services that benefit our community. Yeah, vivienda más asequible para las personas que hoy día sufren para pagar sus rentas de alquiler ya debido a la pérdida de trabajo o por falta de dinero the um, funds to help support tenants and rent subsidies in order to help people that um, are not able to pay their rent either because of a loss of job or, or lack of other. Uh, y más protecciones para inquilinos para evitar los desalojos y evitar que las, las familias terminen viviendo en las calles. Muchas gracias. And more protections against evictions in order to um, avoid more families ending up on the street. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 1757. 1757, please press star six to unmute. Uh, Susie Murphy. I am the executive director of the San Diego Mountain Biking Association and also a member representing District 1 of the County Parks Advisory Committee. Uh, I fully support the Land Use and Environment Group recommended budget. Um, I'm very excited about the increased investment in parks and recreation staff. In current facilities that are reflected in the budget also allow for the continued development of new projects such as the expanded trail and recreation opportunities that are always balanced with resource conservation, such as the Sweetwater Loop Trail, uh, the trail uh, plan at Sycamore Canyon and Boulder Oaks, as well as uh, Sage Hill and the San Luis River Park, uh, which will greatly expand our trail network. So uh, we're always positive about that. So appreciate all those projects in the Parks and Rec budget. Um, and we also, um, uh, fully support the Alpine County Park, uh, and which has been so sorely needed um, for the kids and families of Alpine uh, with the success of the Sweetwater Bike Park, which is also a county facility. Um, and now it said one of the very top amenities in the county, um, which is so much appreciated by the residents in Benita. We know that the residents of Alpine would also greatly benefit from all the amenities that are in the park um, as well as the all-wheel park and the bike park. So thank you for your time. Good evening. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 1265. 1265, please press star six to unmute. 1265, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Masada Dizenhouse. I'm a resident of District 2 and Executive Director of San Diego 350. We ask the supervisors to fully fund the county's commitments to sustainability, including the regional and departmental sustainability plans, the Office of Environmental Justice, and the Youth Environment Corps. We're already seeing climate impacts, including higher temperatures, unrelenting drought, and devastating wildfires, posing huge risks to our economy, our health, and our environment. This funding is necessary to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, eliminate the use of fossil fuels in the energy, housing, and transportation sectors, and meet the county goal of zero carbon by 2035. Budget allocations must prioritize low-income communities and communities of colors, color which have borne the brunt of environmental damage, as well as strong worker protections. Finally, we also support the Invest in San Diego Families priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 9856. 9856, please press star six to unmute. Hello, my name is Ann Elliott, and I am proud to call on behalf of ACLU of San Diego and Imperial County 
and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. To ensure transparency and accountability of how public dollars are being used, the Board of Supervisors should call for an audit of the Sheriff's budget that must be conducted by the county within the next 180 days. This audit should include, but not be limited to, the components shared in a letter submitted to the board of the IS, by the ISDF coalition this week, in addition to any additional information requested by the public in the next 60 days. We oppose the county's budget allocation for 114 additional officers for the county's jail system. We ask that the county reject this proposal and instead develop a clear plan for shrinking our jail population and diverting as many people as possible to our alternative programs. Thank you very much. And I also appreciate the difference that this new board of supervisors is making in just about everything in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 9433. 9433, please press star six to unmute. 9433, para salirse de mudo. Nine four three three. I saw that you were unmuted and you just remuted. Can you press star six again? Sí, nueve cuatro tres tres. Por favor. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening. My name is Claudia. I'm calling to thank you for the work you have done to help tenants so far, but also to urge the County Board of Supervisors to allocate more money in the county budget to assist tenants in need. This is important to me because I'm experiencing hardship due to this pandemic and due to the system that is in place. Our rent is backed up since they take um, two to three months to let you know if you're getting help with rent. And also, when you call and leave a message to the CBO to see how you can get more rental assistance, you don't get a call back and it can't go back in the system to reapply. It won't let you. We are being left hanging, worried, stressed of what to do and where to go. We need more rental assistance, please, and implement better programs that get the results we need. We need to invest in tenant families as much as we invest in property owners. Our family is just as valuable as theirs. People will always um, need more tenant services to make sure they are not being taken advantage of. I thank you for listening and for your support. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is 6013. 6013, please press star six to unmute. Hello, my name is Courtney Norton and I'm a 32 year resident and now a homeowner in what's considered the village of Alpine, which is two miles from the proposed park. I strongly oppose the funding for the Alpine Park. Alpine is a unique rural community and is surrounded three quarters by forest. It is inappropriate to apply the matrix of park land to population to a rural setting. This matrix was designed to maintain park space in urban settings. In addition, active and passive acres count equally towards the school. The proposed park is part of MSCP and specifically identified Tam Tama land. It is an important local wildlife corridor and a migratory bird stopover on the Pacific Flyway. With this construction, not only are you going to ruin the dark sky community, but you're also displacing the wildlife that needs its vi vital corridor to survive. The county property abuts rights field ecological preserve. preserve. It is neglectful to ignore the devastating and irreversible effects the park will have on the adjoining grasslands and their fauna. 99% of California grasslands have already been destroyed. Why, as stewards of this earth, are we gonna destroy more? Numerous Alpine residents have participated in the Alpine Community Planning Group meetings and we have voiced our concerns. At the local level, we have been given nothing but lip service and name calling. Question, are you aware that the County Parks and Recreations were soliciting pro-park comments one night before this hearing? I find this extremely inappropriate and concerning. So now I come to you, the Board of Supervisors, asking you to stop this oversized, redundant park from being built in a community that does not want it. I appreciate your time this evening, and please remember, once this land is paved over, it is gone forever. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 2061. 2061, please press star six to unmute.
Hello, yeah. My name is Layla Aziz, and I'm calling from Pillars of the Community. I'm also calling as a proud coalition member of the ISDF Coalition. First, I want to say that we do want a detailed audit of the Sheriff's Department, and we do support an immigrant legal defense program. I also want to talk about the enormous budget of the district attorney and the limited budget of the public defender, who's getting about 44% of what the district attorney is. Uh, many of us have been through that system, either court washing or supporting a loved one or a defendant ourselves, and it's an adversarial system. When we go in there, it's almost a David and Goliath situation with the district attorney being Goliath, that powerful Philistine who is there to harm Dawood. We're asking that we, we even that out so that defendants and the people that we love and support are given an opportunity to not be overcharged, to not be over-sentenced, and to not be wrongfully charged. And that's what happens. One of their performance goals is that at least, I believe, 70% of defendants plea before prelims. They don't get discovery until right before prelims. You have defendants who are blindly pleading. You have a, a DA with the strongest budget, with the strongest team, with the strongest resources. And you have public defenders who represent 80% of defendants with only 43% of the budget. And those are the issues that we're having and why our criminal justice system in itself is so unfair. Once you're caught up in it, they will do anything for that 90% conviction rate. We've had young people who've gone in and who've won their preliminary, and a district attorney then come and say, I need a conviction. Just take a misdemeanor. Pick one. That's not constitutional. We've had other people who've been seriously overcharged facing enormous time for something that they would have done that was a misdemeanor, that the DA has stacked all of these things on to position themselves in for a plea bargain. The only way we can get through this is with a fight. And we're asking that the public defender's office is given equitable resources that we can keep innocent people out of prison. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is 8855. 8855, please press star six to unmute. Eight eight five five. I can see you unmuted. You may need to unmute your phone as well. Good morning. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Good evening, Chairperson Fletcher and the board. My name is Natalie Mayer, and I'm an SEIU Local Two Two One member and a resident of District Two as a protective services worker for the Child Welfare Services. We are being allocated only thirty five positions. These positions are going to placement units and a new staffing for an important program that supports foster youth. While I'm grateful for this, I can't help but notice how short we are on support in the form of office assistants, supervisors, and social workers for their slaves' risk for mistakes. We only make this a priority when we are in the news negatively. Why let more abuse happen to our vulnerable children and wait for a headline? Let's do better. Please do not adopt the budget as it is and make child welfare services a priority and the children of our community a, prior a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 1565. 1565, please press star six to unmute. 1565, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next caller is 9674. 9674, please press star six to unmute. Good evening, my name is Mustafa Alabate and I am a human services specialist at the El Cajon Family Resource Center and have been working for the County of San Diego for over seven and a half years. This is my second attendance for the budget hearing that follows the one from uh, June 8th. And as a proud SEIU local 221 union member and a part of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition, we have been advocating for an equitable budget that addresses the needs of workers in our community. My co-workers at my office in El Cajon and other offices throughout the many districts in San Diego County have done our work during the pandemic as we do at any other time. And at times with insufficient resources that we have somehow <clears throat> worked to our advantage, all for the sake of always providing an excellent, positive, trauma-informed customer service to the diverse communities in San Diego County. In the last few weeks, this board has heard our stories and voted unanimously for the full funding of hazard pay and teleworking stipends, which brought me tremendous joy to see how the democratic process of our nation does, in fact, work for the people. Also, 
My coworkers and I would like some other items to be addressed in this budget, like the increase of staff for the much needed services that the multiple departments of the Health and Human Services Agency provides to the public. Again, it is relieving to know that there are members on this board who have not ignored our work and effort and care about county workers. So please vote yes for the county employees and San Diego families. Respect us, protect us, and pay us. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5048. 5048, please press star six to unmute. 5048, please press star six to unmute. Hello, I'm Annie Norton and I call Alpine my home for over 30 years. I oppose funding of the proposed Alpine local park, fire. Our entire region, and especially Alpine, is faced with the fear of fire, this fear that pumps through your veins and kicks in your primal need to escape, to survive. I have neighbors and family whose homeowner's insurances have been denied or have been dropped, adding another real dimension to our fears. Over 500 households and their livestock rely on only one access road to get to safety during a fire. That vital road, road is South Grade Road. It is an unimproved two-lane country road. There's not even enough space to adequately add sidewalks to safely get the children of Alpine to this out-of-reach park. Southgate Road has to be, the, to be used to access this park. The park will provide close to 300 designated parking spots. 300. 300 extra cars to add to the already stressed two-laner that is the only artery to a safe evacuation for our existing residents. This overload of additional cars will cause perilous uh, situations, effectively clogging any route to safety. The county is promoting that this park can be an alternative evacuation location. Really? You want people from affected areas to think that they will be safe parking their lives right next to a grassland to wait out a wildfire? The design within the park touts barbecues and fire wings fire rings. We do not need park visitors who gave who have no clue to the real and present danger of fire to abandon a fire and go home. I may sound ridiculous and overreacting, but isn't it wasn't it a non resident who in two thousand three got lost in the Cuyamacas and lit a fire so his friends could find him? These fire features prove how insensitive and clueless DPR is to our real fire dangers. Finally, the county told us, like it or not, you're getting I do not appreciate anything being shoved down my throat or my neighbor's throat. And this park is one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 9399. 9399. Please press star six to unmute. 9399-9399. O prima el asterisco para poder hablar. 9399. Please press star six to unmute. 9399, oprimir la estrella 6 para poder hablar. ¿Me escucha? ¿Me escucha? ¿Cuál es su nombre? Bueno. ¿Sí me escucha? ¿Sí me escucha? Sí. Ok, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Leticia Cerón. Soy miembro de ACTE y la coalición ISDF. Good afternoon. My name is Leticia Cerón. I'm a member of ACE and I am also a member of ISDF. Doy gracias a la Junta de Supervisores would, por escuchar a nuestra comunidad like y agradezco en especial mm -hmm. yes, like al Supervisor Vargas, Lawson, Freeway y Fisher por su liderazgo y trabajo que han realizado. I would like to thank the Borough Supervisors, you know, for supporting our community, uh, particularly you know, Supervisor Lawson Remer, Supervisor Nora Vargas, and Mr. Fletcher. Adelante, señora. Nuestra, com nuestra comunidad se ve muy beneficiada por las políticas e inversiones que ustedes han apoyado para ser aprobadas en, nuestra, en nuestro condado. Um, Yes, our, your, poli your, you know, your policies and your investments in our community have really, really supported and helped uh, you know, our county. Les pido de favor 
que estos elementos estén totalmente financiados en el borrador final del presupuesto para apoyo a nuestra comunidad. I would like you to please, you know, fund the uh, final budget, you know, for our community. Sabemos de antemano que esto nos ayudará, pero se necesita mucho más apoyo y trabajo. We know beforehand that this is going to help us, but yes, we need a lot of support and it's going to take a lot of work. Actualmente nuestro condado está invirtiendo más dinero en el departamento del sheriff que en cualquier otro departamento del condado. Right now. Y no existe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, right now, we're counting in investing more money uh, with the sheriff departments than any other place in the county. Adelante. Y no existe información sobre dónde es que se va todo ese dinero. And we don't have any information um, where all that money is going to. Apoyamos al ISDF y le solicitamos a nuestros supervisores que nos apoyen y se solicite una auditoría um, del presupuesto del departamento del sheriff. We do support the ISDF and do we do ask uh, an auditing for the sheriff's department. También les pido por favor que apoyen eh, a los no desalojos ya que debido a la pandemia muchas personas han sido um, han perdido sus trabajos y debido a eso pues no se ha podido pagar la renta. I would also like us to support the tenants and not to evict us because a lot of people due to the pandemic have lost their jobs. Les doy las gracias por todo el apoyo que nos den y, y que nos sigan dando para que esto uh, no pueda suceder. I would like to thank you for your support and I hope that you continue to support us so this won't happen. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5806. 5806, please press star six to unmute. Hi. Good evening, County Board of Supervisors. My name is Ben Stone, and I work for the San Diego Mountain Biking Association. I'm calling this evening to express my support for uh, the budget and funding for trails and parks in this year's budget. Um, I had a number of other notes sort of prepared, but I was a bit surprised this evening by uh, a number of oppositional uh, comments towards the um, new proposed park in Alpine. And I just wanted to say I attended those meetings along with hundreds of people from Alpine. And from my recollection of all those meetings, there was overwhelming support from families, kids, uh, kids who, who raced in uh, high school mountain biking teams, kids who wanted a, a safe park to play in, um, uh, the, the, the kids who attend the middle school and the elementary school that are on opposing sides of uh, rights field that this park could serve within walking distance from their schools. And I, I'm just, um, I, I have to say the support was overwhelming and I'm not sure if what we're hearing uh, in these meetings is representative of the community because most people left those two meetings understanding that this was a done deal and this park was moving forward. So, you know, when you know people hear that there's opposition to this park, I, I'm not sure they're really understanding that um, this is something real that's happening. So I just wanted to comment that I was present at those meetings, uh, very positive folks in the community are very supportive of that park. They just don't seem to know it's in jeopardy and understand that, you know, a small group of folks who seem to have, um, you know, uh, new concerns about this being close to their, their homes are opposing it now. So thank you very much for everything you do. And I appreciate the time this evening. Thank you. Our next speaker will be 7478. 7478, please press star 6 to unmute. 7478, favor de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. 7478. 
7478. Please press star 6 to unmute. 7478. Tienen que oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. We'll come back to that one. Regresamos con usted. Um, our next caller then is 9156. 9156, please press star 6 to unmute. 9156, favor de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. 9156. 9156, please press star 6 to unmute. 9156, favor de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Si no, regresamos con usted. We'll come back. Um, our next caller is 7248. 7248, please press star 6 to unmute. I'm Dominique Norton, resident of Alpine for 13 years. And I'm here with my two-year-old daughter, Alvi. We oppose the funding included in the budget for the Alpine Local Park. Alpine is unique in that we have the open space in the heart of their community. It is our pulse. It is everything that draws us to this community or has kept us here for years. When I was a child, I stood in front of the San Diego Board of Supervisors and pled for the protection of what is now known as Wrights Field Ecological Preserve. I remember going in person to the meeting with my handmade poster board that stated save the field, protect it for our future generations. Here I am years later, pleading for the protection of this land for my daughter and our future generations yet again. It is our responsibility as stewards. We know, we now know more than ever as a result of the pandemic that the access to open and green space is vital for our physical and mental health. Peer reviewed literature supports that access to open space has higher value than parks with amenities, especially if the amenities are not maintained. The site in of the Alpine Local Park is already a park. It is 98 acres of open space made up of nat native grasslands, Engelman Oak woodlands, coastal, coastal sage scrub, which is home to listed species and species of special concern. This is already a location we can share with my daughter and it's in its current state and use it as a teachable moment, moment for, for her too to learn how to respect our resources and for, to fight for the protection of our environment. Access to quality park Quality parks is an equity issue. As a community, we need to focus on environmental justice and equality and equity. We need to build a park where it is needed and desired by the community. The proposed park is two miles from the center of town without safe access. This is inequitable. We need to build facilities that are accessible by all. I re respectfully request that the Board of Supervisors votes against the funding included in the budget for construction of this park. I urge you to hear the concerns voiced by members of our community. I urge you to protect this property for our future generations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 9706. 9706, please press star six to unmute. Black Lives Matter is more than a slogan. It's a movement, a movement for the liberation of all black folks globally. Sir, can you please state that includes the audio record? Excuse me? Can you please state your name for the audio record? Yes, my name is Aman Mahmoud and I'm a resident of Southeast San Diego, District 4. Um, but yes, Black Lives Matter is more than a slogan. It's a movement for the liberation of black folks globally. And that includes black San Diegans. When black San Diegans have told you all many, many times that District Attorney Summer 7th office continuously harasses us and continues to perpetuate anti-blackness in, in, inside and outside of the court, it's time for the Board of Supervisors to act. It is not okay to continuously fund the Sheriff's Office at the level at which it is today and the District Attorney's Office while the Public Defender's Office goes underfunded each and every single year. You all have been given the position and the power to change the way in which we go about priority budgeting in this county. I'm coming to you not as your constituent, not as a resident of San Diego County, but as a human being, because we breathe the same air and sleep inside the same county. And I'm asking you all, does my life not matter? Because if it does to you, please fund the office that has protections resources for folks that look like myself, the most marginalized people in this county. Please increase the budget for the public defender's office, because we know that 
District Attorney Summer Seven's office doesn't keep us safe. She has never kept us safe, and in fact, does more harm than good. I want to say thank you to the three Democrats on the board who have continuously been on the right side of history each and every single time an issue has come up. Please do the same thing today and help increase the, police, the increase the budget for the Public Defender's Office. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 6631. 6631, please press star six to unmute. 6631, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next caller is 2522. 2522, please press star six to unmute. 2522, please press star six to unmute. Hello. Good evening, Board of Students. Go ahead. Hello. This is 6631. Hello? Go ahead. We can hear you. My name is Barbara Pinto. I'd like to um, greetings to the County Board of Supervisors this evening. I live in District One. I'm a resident of a I'm a resident of the Logan Heights area and a member of ACE. I'd like to extend very special thanks to Nathan Fletcher, Nora Vargas, and Terry Lawson Reamer for all of the support that they have given to ACE and many of the residents of San Diego, uh, especially for eviction ban and all the policies related that aided tenants during this very, very challenging time. We appreciate all your support. We know and we realize that there's many, many more things that need to be done here. And we are continually asking you to help and support us with the things that are needed. Currently, we do not understand or agree with the majority of money that's being allocated for the county sheriff's department, and we feel that transparency is warranted here. With so much needed in our communities, why is so much money needed for policing? More dollars need to be invested in programs like the Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards, Immigration Legal Defense, uh, education, health, better wages, and especially more affordable housing. It is felt that there would be far less need for policing if we had a better and more stable community. Investing in San Diego families makes for stable families, better residents, and we contribute more to its growth and to its economy. One thing that will aid in this development of San Diego is the need and the, the uh, development of more and more affordable housing. I am 75 years old. I have worked and lived in San Diego all my life. I'm a senior citizen and I pay over 80% of my income for rent. Thank you, ma'am. This is not working for me. Thank Please you. consider more affordable housing for San Diego residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 2522. 2522. Please press star six to unmute. Two five two two. Please press star six to unmute. Good evening, Board of Supervisors. Thank you for listening to us tonight. My name is Jarrell Howard, G-E-R-R-E-L-L. I have been a worker of the county for eight years as of June 28th and proud SEIU Local 221 union member and a part of the Invest San Diego Family Coalition. We all have been advocating for equitable budget that address the needs of county workers in our communities. My coworkers and I sacrificed a lot during the pandemic by adjusting to the many changes at the beginning of this pandemic. Being sent home to work, many had to give up things to get better Wi-Fi and internet in order to work they, that we paid for out of our, our home budget. We worked tirelessly to get the aid to those that found themselves without a job or health insurance overnight. 
We faced uphill battles to ensure that the county system functioned during the pandemic. In the last few weeks, the board has heard our stories and graciously committed to funding of hazard pay and telework stipends. This, it is a relieving. It is relieving to know that there are many on the board. There are members on the board who have not ignored our sacrifices and actually care about county workers and the communities in San Diego County, who are taxpayers also and are having a hard time meeting daily needs. Thank you for that. We workers see the needs of our communities and ask the board to fund all of the community-based organizations that work tirelessly to help so many of our, all of the communities in San Diego County. We look forward to continuing to working with the board on how to maintain the county workers with better training and offering of promotions within the county. There are many black workers who have higher education that is overlooked for promotions. Thank you. The housing, the homeless crisis is a crisis. Thank we you. need to work on that also. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 6242. 6242, please press star six to unmute. 6242, please press star six to unmute. Six two four two. I can see that you've unmuted. You may need to unmute your phone as well. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. My name is Joyce. I am opposed to size and active amenities included in the proposed Alpine County Park. This property is located on a two-lane country road with no sidewalks and no room to add them. The only safe access to this park is through private property or by motor vehicle. You say that you are concerned about air quality and climate change. However, placing a big city type park in a rural environment will increase, will result in multiple added vehicle trips per day, leading to increased carbon emissions and decreased air quality. It makes more sense to locate the bike park, skate park, and other activities where they are accessible by bike, skateboard, and foot. You also state the importance of protecting native habitat and open spaces. That is exactly what this property is. From the Engelman Oaks to the native grasslands to the wildlife and endangered species, this property is a jewel akin to Mission Trails that should not be paved over for a generic sports-centric park. A passive park with trails, exercise stations, dog park, picnic areas, shade structures, an accessible playground. Those are amenities that are appropriate. Yes, Alpine has waited a long time for a park. However, that park should be custom to this community, not generic cookie cutter. I want to address a gentleman earlier who sadly lost multiple horses during the West Fire. It should be noted, and I've heard from many people, that this area should be used as an area for safety during uh, fires. The equestrian area of this proposed park burned during the West Fire. It burned from this fire, this property north to Alpine Boulevard. There was no egress. Thank there was no egress. Thank you. It was cut off. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to uh, just take a brief 15-minute uh, break. I want to give the chance, uh, the staff who are uh, helping manage these calls, a uh, opportunity to stretch your legs for a minute. So we were going to take a brief 15-minute uh, uh, recess, and we will reconvene at 8.15. So if you're on the phone, just hang on for a few minutes. We will be right back, and then we will finish up for the evening after that. Thanks.
All right, thank you for everyone's uh, patience. We're gonna go ahead and resume public comment at this time. Okay, our next caller is 7478. 7478, please press star six to unmute. 7478. 7478, favor de oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Bueno. Sí, buenas. Bu buenas noches. Hola, mi nombre es Marta. Llamo de Axe para agradecerles por el trabajo que se ha realizado para ayudar a los inquilinos hasta ahora. Pero también incitar a la Junta de Supervisores del Condado a asignar más dinero para presupuesto del condado, para ayudar a los inquilinos que lo necesitamos. Esto es importante sí, para entender, mí. Tantito. Perdón. Uh, good evening. My name is Marta. I am calling to, um, to thank the Board of Supervisors for the funds and for all the help that you have given to tenants, but also to urge you for additional resources to the budget to help tenants. Ahora sí puede continuar. Gracias. Esto es importante para mí porque um, las personas, habemos personas que tenemos um, menos uh, um, entrada de dinero y es tan importante que sigan ayudando para la renta, que es lo más, lo más que puede frustrar a uno. Um, necesitamos invitar a familias de inquilinos, tanto como, como invertir en eh, como en los propietarios. Su familia de ellos es tan valiosa como la de nosotros. Um, estamos, estamos más ayuda para los pagos de renta. Por favor, se les agradece que tomen en cuenta esta gran ayuda que necesitamos. Gracias. Que pasen buenas noches. It's very important to me that um that we have this assistance for tenants because people, you know, have less income coming in and it's very important to help with the rent. Um, that's really one of the things that can, that can frustrate someone and, and really disarm them. And, um, and we really need you to invest in tenants like you do in landlords because their lives are as equally as important as ours. So I really urge you to help us with the rent and that is it. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you. Our next caller is 4340. 4340. Please press star 6 to unmute. 4340. 4340. Please press star 6 to unmute. 4340. Tiene que oprimir asterisco 6 para poder hablar. Hola, buenas tardes. Este, Habla Eduardo. ¿Sí me escucha? Sí, adelante, Eduardo. Sí, mi nombre es Eduardo Medrano. Soy miembro de ACE este, y la, pues la coalición del ISD. Eh, pues estoy hablando pues para darle gracias por el apoyo al programa eh, del equipo móvil de respuesta de crisis y la oficina de normas laborales este y pues eh, quiero reiterar el apoyo eh, y pues les pedimos a los supervisores que nos apoyen y a solicitar una auditoría para el, el presupuesto para el departamento del Cherry este pues para que sean usados para cuestiones de vivienda y de de, de salarios o transporte, eh, algo que sea realmente este, funcional para la, la ciudadanía. Eh, y pues sería todo. Muchas gracias. Gracias. So my name is Eduardo. Good afternoon. Um, Eduardo Medrano, and I'm calling. I'm a member of ACE as well as ISDF, and I'm calling to really thank the supervisors for their support of the MCRT program as well as the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement. I'm also calling to ask for additional help and, and, um, and a full audit of the Sheriff's Department budget. And instead of investing money, that it should go to housing and salaries and transportation, things that are really functional for everyone in the county. Um, we ask that you look at that. 
Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Our next caller is 7295. 7295, please press star six to unmute. 7295, please press star six to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Alejandra Mendoza. I live in the district, I live in district one in the city of Imperial Beach. I am a member of ACE and ISDF. Um, I would first like to thank the supervisors, Nathan Fletcher, Nora Vargas, and Tara Lawson Reamer for all the help and support that they have been giving to us to better our communities. I'm a calling in support today of the Youth Environment Recreation Corps program. As an 18 year old and a resident in my community, I strongly believe this program is very important because it will help open up opportunities for the youth who are not in school or working. In addition, Part of the money will be allocated to part of the money will be allocated to organizations who support youth. We must make sure that the county continues to invest in key areas that will strengthen our communities because we are your future. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is seven eight zero five seven eight zero five. Please press star six to unmute. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Tim Macedo. I have worked for the county for four years as a human service specialist at the El Cajon Family Resource Center. As a proud SEIU Local 221 member and as part of the ISDF coalition, we have and continue to advocate for an equitable budget that addresses the needs of workers as well as that of our community. As such, I want to thank the board in advance for supporting hazard pay for my brothers and sisters who sacrificed their health to work in the field and for supporting a teleworking stipend for those who incurred extra expenses uh, while teleworking to support our community. I would also like to thank the board in advance for support, uh, supporting our community by hiring additional human service specialists to reduce our workload and to help our, our fellow uh, community residents. However, as someone who chose a career path uh, that uplifts and uh, serves my community, I praise Supervisor Lawson Reamer's efforts to protect workers by establishing an office of standards and enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 0722. 0722. Please press star six to unmute. 0722. Please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next speaker is 9713. 9713. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Eduardo, and I am a member of ACE and the Invest in San Diego Families uh, Coalition. I'm here uh, to hear some of the most of the sentiments here in opposing the increase in police in the sheriff budgeting, um, and to push for a audit on how the one billion dollars is already being used. Um, I also want to highlight the fact that overspending on policing and incarceration as well as police harassment in our vulnerable communities is uh, something that takes away resources from other programs and services that could actually help our community um, like the Office of Labor Standards, the MCRT and the Immigrant Legal Defense Program as well as additional funding for county workers, uh, housing, uh, anything really could be used better use of this money than to increase the sheriff's budget. So um, please oppose this and push for an audit within 180 days. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 1128. 1128, please press star six to unmute. 1128, please press star six to unmute. Hello, my name is Maya De La Torre and my pronouns are she, her, Aya and I'm a resident of Convoy. I'm with Youth Will and a part of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. I'm speaking in support of the Youth Environment and Recreation Corps 
that will provide low-income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness in the growing sector of the green economy. By investing in our infrastructure, we can ensure that every youth in our region gets the opportunity to thrive. I also want to thank Supervisors Lawson Reamer, Vargas, and Fletcher for your leadership this budget cycle. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have helped pass in San Diego County this budget cycle. In addition to the Youth Corps program, I ask that you please ensure that the Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, and Immigrant Legal Defense Program this year are fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as ISDS request for an independent audit of the Sheriff's budget. This is a moment to set San Diego apart in caring for our most marginalized communities and setting a precedent of transparent spending. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 5536. 5536, please press star six to unmute. 5536. Good evening, Chair Fletcher, Vice Chair Vargas, and Supervisors. My name is Anahid Bracky, and I'm the CEO of the San Diego Hunger Coalition and a resident of Santee. I'm also the current chair of the county's Social Services Advisory Board, and I want to thank Chair Fletcher for appointing me to this body. I'm calling today to urge the Board of Supervisors to fully fund the Make the County Work initiative that is championed by Supervisor Lawson Reamer by allocating funding for a facilitator for the Outreach, Accessibility, and Enrollment Task Force, which was created as an ad hoc subcommittee of the Social Services Advisory Board. I'd like to thank Supervisor Lawson Reamer for her April 6th board letter that called for this task force. And I'd like to thank the board for their unanimous vote and support. I volunteered to chair the new enrollment task force because it's very important to me that anyone in need of assistance be able to find information about county benefit programs, how to apply, and where to go for help with their application or case. The county's Health and Human Services Agency has made tremendous improvements over the past decade in making these pro benefit programs easier to access. I believe that we can do even better. By funding a facilitator for this process, you will enable community members with lived experience to join in this work. In order to advance equity and access, we need to hear directly from people about their experiences as well as their ideas for making the process earlier. Oh, sorry, making the process easier. Um, please help us make the county work for everyone by enabling the enrollment task force to meaningfully, meaningfully engage the recipients of public benefit programs in our process. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 9792. 9792, please press star six to unmute. Nine seven nine two. I can see that you've unmuted. You may need to unmute your phone as well. Hello. Hi. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Cool. Hi, my name is Sophia Hydari, and I'm a resident of District Two, and a member of Youth Will, as well as a member of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. I am calling today to speak in support of the Youth Environment Recreation Corps that will provide lower income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness in the green economy. All young people in our region deserve to thrive and by amplifying systems of support in our county, we can um, work towards making that process. Um, I also wanna thank Supervisors Lawson Reamer, Vargas and Fletcher for your leadership this budget cycle and for beginning to reverse years of damage done to our communities. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you've helped pass this year. In addition to the Youth Corps program, I ask that you please ensure that the Mobile Crisis Response Team's Office of Labor Standards Enforcement and Immigrant Legal Defense Fund program um, this year are fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as the request for an independent audit of the sheriff's budget. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Our next speaker is 1898. 1898, please press star six to unmute. 1898, please press star six to unmute. Hello? Hello, go ahead. Oh, um, hi, my name is Ariana Federico. I am the leader organizer at Mid City Camp. We are a proud partner of the ISD. 
ICF um, coalition. Um, after many years of advocacy by ICF partners, we are very excited to see that the, this new Board of Supervisor has found with some short communities. A special thanks to Supervisors Vargas, Lawson, Reamer, and Fletcher for all your leadership. These new investments will help us a lot. Um, we know that there is more work needed. Um, right now, there's no information of how the Sheriff's Department spent the $1 billion of our money. So we stand with ISDF and ask the supervisors to call for the audit of the Sheriff's, um, Sheriff's Department budget as much as um, of our county funding as possible um, should be going to programs and services that our communities actually need, such as higher wages for workers, more affordable housing and protection for tenants, and better and more affordable transportation. We hope that we can continue this collaboration with, um, with government elected officials and community. Our communities would greatly benefit from policies and investments um, you have helped pass in um, San Diego County this year. We thank you for your support, and we hope that you can continue to support us, especially um, with this new request for the audit of the Sheriff's Department budget. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is 4536. 4536, please press star 6 to unmute. Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Miguel Penalosa. I'm an attorney with the Alternate Public Defender's Office. Uh, prior to that, I was a law enforcement officer. I worked with the sheriffs as well as, uh, as a federal law enforcement officer prior to that. I just wanted to say that I do oppose the large budget for the sheriff's department. Um, and I do echo a lot of what's been said already in redirecting some of those funds to community-based uh, organizations uh, such as that crisis team that I think is important to help keep uh, San Diego safe. I can say as someone who's been through these trainings, uh, police officers were not trained on how to deal with uh, those sort of situations. And I think that they would be better suited in responding to violent crimes and other sort of community-based policing rather than these uh, mental health crises. As a public defender, I do see these same sort of issues and kind of the revolving door that happens. Um, and by kind of funding the money towards that, they're going to use it in doing what they know how to do, which is go out and arrest people and kind of keep this incarceration cycle going over. I think that money would be better suited into programs that will help find people uh, resources. And we've seen, I think, what we have right now in COVID is a new opportunity to reimagine the criminal justice system and invest that money into people instead of locking them up, which is, as we know, is not proven effective. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for your time um, and for all the board members for the work that you've been doing. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 9858. 9858, please press star six to unmute. Hello. Hello, this is Malcolm, uh, representing Pillars of the Community in Encanto. And um, I just want to I just want to speak briefly on the criminal justice system in San Diego. And, and I hate to quote uh, Donald Trump, but when it comes to the criminal justice system, uh, the system is rigged. And the reason I say that is because the, the prosecutor's office mm -hmm. is highly overfunded in comparison with the dish, with the with the public defender's office. And with that being the case, you have an uneven playing field. So basically, you, what you have is like uh, a Pop Warner football team playing against professional NFL players. You know, and it's sad because the system is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But we spend more money to fund the people that are trying to convict potentially innocent people instead of funding the, the, the public defenders who are going to defend potentially innocent people. And, and it doesn't make any sense. You know, it, at the bare minimum, there should be an equal level of funding for both sides at the bare minimum. You know, and, 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 and if we really want to speak realistically, there should be more funding going to the public defender's office. 
because it's our job to protect the innocence of protect potentially innocent people. And we have we have prosecutors whose mantra and motto is that a good DA can, con- can convict a guilty man, but a great DA can convict an innocent man. And to them, getting the conviction is just a notch on a belt. It's just it's a, it's a game, but it's a game with with human life. It's a game where people are getting sentenced to years in a box. So we need to we need to do the right thing, and we need to allocate more funding to the public defender's office immediately. Thank you all, and thank you for having us. Thank you to um, thank you to the supervisors who are doing the right thing and representing communities who have been grossly underrepresented for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 2828. 2828. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, good evening. This is uh, Ron Sanchez. I live in District 3 and I'm calling on behalf of the ACLU and ISDF. So this week I read that our beautiful state of California was ranked 50th dead last when it comes to opportunity for its residents. This was in U.S. News and World Reports 2021 Best States Rankings. This doesn't have to apply to San Diego if the board makes the right decisions regarding the budget. Pose one billion budget for the sheriff's, sheriff's department does not create opportunity for us, so please reconsider this. And as many callers have asked tonight, please fund programs such as the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement to ensure workers are protected. Fund the Immigrant Legal Defense Program so immigrant families can stay together and contribute to the community. Fund the expansion of the Mobile Crisis Response Team because they, not the police, should respond to mental health calls. We also need more affordable housing to stop the exodus of talent from our city. The median price of a home in San Diego County is 825000 One of my coworkers told me he's moving to Arizona next year and many friends have already left because opportunity is better elsewhere. So please continue to invest in programs that support the community. Thank you for your time. And a quick shout out to Supervisors Lawson Reamer, Vargas, and Chair Fletcher for your hard work and support. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is four, sorry, 5694. 5694, please press star six to unmute. Hi, this is Jose Franco Garcia. I'm the uh, policy director with Environmental Health Coalition and a pro- uh, partner of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. First of all, I wanted to say, you know, as a, res- a lifelong resident of San Diego County, currently a resident of District 1, I'm very happy and, you know, proud to see the opportunity where we now have a board of supervisors thanking uh, Vice Chair Vargas, uh, Supervisor Lawson Reamer, and Chair Fletcher for the opportunity to get to work with the board of supervisors and work towards a budget that really represents community members and people. Also, as a person who's been, you know, organizing and um, and doing work here in San Diego and sees the county as, you know, a place where a lot can get done, a lot of uh, important uh, budget decisions are made, we have to keep pushing to see, you know, to what we can't, what is possible and what we really need to make up after so many years. So just, you know, a couple of things I wanted to uh, express along with the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition, thanking you for your support of the mobile crisis response team the Office of Labor Standards, also uh, the Immigrant Legal Defense Program, and also would uh, stand with ISDF asking for the supervisors to call for an audit of the Sheriff's Department. Furthermore, I did want to also, you know, make sure that we have full funding for like the uh, the Environmental Justice Office and for all sustainability practices and move towards uh, more affordable housing and better and more affordable transportation. That's what I wanted to say on my behalf. I also had two community members who Unfortunately, we both had to leave the calls earlier to uh, about 8 o'clock because of uh, uh, responsibilities of both caregivers. Uh, Roddy Jerome, a, mem- a resident from City Heights, wanted me to express on his behalf uh, support as well for, the, for sustainability and for the Environmental Justice Office. That was really important to him. And another member of, uh, of our, another member from City Heights, Esperanza Gonzalez, asked me to communicate to you all the importance of the importance of language access. You know, she's a very active member. I was really happy that her uh, her testimony would be in, uh, interpreted today, but also wanted to express the importance of her having access to the information as well and making sure that, you know, the, that information is available in multiple languages. Thank you again for your time. Uh, have a great evening. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next caller is 1421. 1421, please press star six to unmute. 1421, please press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Good evening. My name is Sarah Nielsen. I have worked for the county for over nine years and currently I'm a librarian at the El Cajon Library Branch. I'm a steward with SEIU 221, supporter of the ISDF coalition and an advocate for an equitable budget that addresses the needs of workers and our community. Working through the pandemic has been very challenging for myself and my coworkers as we work sometimes far outside the scope of our careers on the front lines of the COVID response. And as we strive to be continually flexible and resilient through the many reassignments and changes in service models, oftentimes with little to no notice or time to prepare or adjust. It's an understatement to say that it has been a physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting experience for us all that is still heavily impacting us today. In the last few weeks, this board has heard our stories and graciously committed to the full funding of hazard pay and teleworking stipends and increasing access to county services by funding for translation and interpre interpretation services across county departments. We also ask that you commit to the funding, the Little Free Libraries Initiative, and the expansion of the Forest Branch Library. It's relieving to know that there are members on this board who have not ignored our sacrifices and actually care about county workers. I ask you to approve the CAO's recommended operational plan and keep all the items that the ISDF coalition has advocated for. Please vote yes on this item and vote yes for county employees and San Diegan families. Respect us, protect us, and pay us. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller will be 3877. 3877, please press star six to unmute. Hello, thank you, supervisors, for giving us the opportunity to weigh in on the budget. Um, I am a, you know, my name is Heather Hofshi, and I'm a lifelong uh, resident of East County and living in District 2. And um, I have seen more droughts, more wildfires, more heat waves, you know, more danger from climate change, you know, from my childhood to now. So I really, really ask you to fully fund your sustainability plans and your climate action plan, you know, committee and really get those plans in place so we can start fighting for, you know, to mitigate these, you know, massive problems that already affect us all the time out in District 2 and, um, you know, save the people who live here from the worst effects of climate change. So please, you know, really make that a priority going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 6687. 6687, please press star 6 to unmute. Good evening. My name is Priscilla Willis. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a proud SEIU Local 221 Union member and the county chapter president for all unionized employees. I've worked for the county 19 years. I'm here in support of a portion of the budget. Thank you for hazard pay, essential worker stipend, and all of the new employee positions that are being added on this budget. While this is a great start, it means absolutely nothing until we get new leadership. I have worked in a gas station and gotten robbed at gunpoint. And that was one of my safer jobs compared to working here at the county because you have to constantly watch your back. If you are not a part of a certain group, a yes person, or a person that keeps your mouth shut and take the abuse, you will not make it here. The harassment, bullying, and abuse of these employees has been going on for far too long. You can't promote if you don't fall under one of these criteria I just shared. I said again, get new leadership. Are all of these new employees coming in will not make it. See you guys at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 9408. 9408, please press star six to unmute. 9408. Good evening. My name is Miley Nabwan. My pronouns she and hers. I'm a we lost her. Our next speaker then is 94, oh, looks like she's back. 9408, please press star six to unmute. Hi. Go ahead. Nine. Hi there, uh, my name is, hello. Go ahead, sorry. It's okay. Uh, my name is Mylena Buon. My pronouns are she and hers. 
and I'm a health information specialist at Public Health Services as well as a proud SEIU 221 union member and part of the ISDF coalition. I first want to thank the Board of Supervisors, especially Supervisor Fletcher, Lawson Reamer, and Vargas for supporting community needs with your commitment to support its workers that serve your jurisdictions by fully funding hazard pay and the telework stipend. Like many county workers, the pandemic has dismantled and overstretched my coworkers, especially under health promotion. By supporting the needs established by the pandemic, while having to try and maintain existing partnerships with many communities they already represent. The support shows that you can acknowledge the hard work we do to support you and your constituents. I additionally thank you for listening to worker needs and understanding that without staff, we are unable to keep our communities healthy, safe, and thriving unless we increase staff throughout the county of San Diego, especially in areas such as child welfare services, self-sufficiency, and the San Diego Psychiatric Hospital as well as the establishment of an office for immigrant and refugee affairs and the office of labor standards. That being said, there are a few things um, my coworkers and I need to be addressed in this budget, including the retention of employees by addressing staffing crisis in Edgemore and mandatory overtime in the detention centers, as well as the decrease in funding policing by investing that money into restorative justice by supporting the Office of Public defenders I ask you to approve the CAO's uh, recommended operational plan and keep all the items that the ISDF coalition has successfully advocated for thank you thank you our next caller is six seven nine six six seven nine six please press star six to unmute Hello, Chairperson Fletcher and Supervisor. My name is Mamie McCall, and I'm a 24-year-old mem member of the San Diego Housing Commission. I live in Chula Vista, and I'm a proud member of my union, SEIU 221. So our union, through my union, my coworkers and I have reached an agreement with our employer that has kept us safe during the last 15 months of the global pandemic. San Diego Housing Commission workers who are able to do their job from home are provided a technology step stipend each month, and those who are going to the office are receiving hazard pay for the extra risk. This agreement has allowed us to safely continue our vital work in our community. Unfortunately, not every member of my union is covered by a similar agreement. My brothers and sisters working for the county have risked their lives to keep the county up and running for over a year, often with inadequate PPE and without receiving a dime of hazard pay. You have the power to change that. You have the power to make sure that the county staff are paid what they deserve to be paid. We ask you to finish the job and fund the housing pay for county employees. Please vote yes for this item and vote yes for the county employee. Respect us, protect us, and pay us. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next caller is 2973. 2973, please press star six to unmute. 2973, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next caller is 3849. 3849, please press star six to unmute. 38. Hello? Hello? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Leslie Maslin. I'm a librarian um, with the San Diego County Library System. I've worked there for seven years, and I'm a proud SEIU Local 221 member and part of the ISDF Coalition. Uh, we've been advocating for an equitable budget that addresses the needs of workers in our communities, and I think we're on the way um, to that. Uh, my coworkers and I have sacrificed during the pandemic by continuing to provide, <clears throat> excuse me, um, public library services despite high pre-COVID vacancies, COVID reassignments, and family obligations like virtual schooling and elder care during the height of the pandemic. This new board has committed to fully funding the hazard pay and teleworking stipend and the Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement, which I truly hope keeps an eagle eye on the county's labor practices as well. Um, but here's what's missing. 
the 4S library expansion is wonderful to hear, but the 4S library is not the only library facility that needs some help. SCL, SCCL branches um, that have reached capacity in serving their communities and have no more room for growth. We cannot serve our communities without the tools needed. And these tools are spacious community rooms, upgraded buildings that have um, the technology, adequate technology to provide um, public computer access, teach classes even remotely, um, <clears throat> and that are safe for public use. Um, <clears throat> it's important that we fund libraries and that we foster the ability for growth for our facilities as our communities flourish and grow because we live that in these same communities that we Please vote yes and approve the CAO's ROP and vote yes for, for county employers employees San Diego families, respect us, protect us, and pay us. Thank you. Our next caller is 4728. 4728. Please press star six to unmute. Hello, this is Michael Funtis. I'm a longtime Alpine resident, and I, like another caller earlier, have attended both meetings on the proposed park. And yes, we were for a park but was once a park has morphed into a sports complex. And the proof is in the map itself. If you look at it, and I don't know who uh, the Board of Supervisors has a map in front of it, in front of them, but areas uh, for picnic, the area for picnic is about the same size as the skateboard park. It is half the size of the bike park. There's also a mountain bike uh, meeting area, meaning that the d very dangerous road of South Grade will be heavily impacted with mountain bikes. Again, this is a very dangerous road with blind curves and blind spots where you come over a hill and you can't see anybody. This is a very dangerous situation. There's no need for another ballpark, baseball park. There are baseball parks in the area very close by at, uh, at the junior high school, elementary school. There's no need for a basketball court. Again, these are very close by. Harborson Canyon, which is also part of the uh, Alpine, has baseball and basketball courts. If the baseball park actually takes up one-fourth of the area called multi-use area. So the multi-use area shown right in the middle of the park is not for multi-use. One fourth of it is designed for baseball. I would ask the Board of Supervisors to save some money on this park, downsize it, and use that money for other projects. I, I thank you for your time, and I urge a no on this park. Revisit it and get it fixed the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 4728. 4728, please press star six to unmute. 4728, I can Hello? go ahead. Oh, awesome, thank you. Um, hello, my name is Sylvia, and I am calling on behalf of ACE and a member of the ISDF Coalition and a resident of District 1. Um, I wanted to start off by saying thank you for supporting the Mobile Crisis Response Team, the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement and Immigration Legal Defense Program. Um, and thank you, Supervisor Vargas, Lawson Reamer, and Fletcher for helping pass these policies and invest that um, will help our, assist our communities. There are some things that will greatly benefit our community, but we hope to see them fully funded and equipped when the final draft of the budget is in place to truly make an impact that we all wish to see. While we move forward, I also want to recognize that these are some of the things that we should have had in San Diego a long time ago. These new investments will help us, but we also know that there's more work that's needed to be done. Um, we definitely could be advocating for a park right now, but being from a community that is a majority of working class people of color that was hit hard by the pandemic, I know that COVID has shown some of the necessities and resources that are needed. So 
some people will be facing eviction, possibly homelessness too, if we do not make sure we respond with more protection for tenants and more affordable housing. We need a real equity in our county, not equality, because we don't need an, a park in our community if we won't even be able to use it because it will be over police and it will be putting our community members and youth in danger. One billion to the sheriff's department is a huge amount of money and more than any other county department is receiving. We should know what that money is being used for. So we stand with ISDF to ask the supervisors to call for an audit on the sheriff's department budget. We need to make sure we know what, where that money is going or move that funding into creating more affordable housing and more resources for our unsheltered neighbors, not funding for over-policing. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 1955. 1955, please press star six to unmute. Hello. Hello, we can- My name is Morley San Augustin and I am with ACE. And I'm a proud to call on behalf of ICF Coalition. Um, these are new investments that will help us a lot, but we know that more work is needed. Right now, there's no more information on how the Sheriff's Department spends $1 billion of our money. So we stand with ISDF and we ask the supervisors to call for an audit of the Sheriff's Department's budget. And also would like to thank the supervisors for their continuous support. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 4231. 4231, please press star six to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Shay Dawkins, pronouns she, her, hers, and I am proud to call on behalf of the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial Counties and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. We stand with the ISDF and ask the supervisors to stand with us and call for an audit of the Sheriff's Department budget. Overspending on policing and incarceration limits the resources that are available for the programs and services that our communities really need. To ensure transparency and accountability of how public dollars are being used, the Board of Supervisors should call for an audit of the sheriff's budget that must be conducted by the county within the next 180 days. This audit should include, but not be limited to, the components shared in a letter submitted to the board by the ISDF coalition this week, in addition to any additional information requested by the public in the next 60 days. Despite many new investments, the county is continuing to overfund policing and incarceration. Our county elected officials must commit to a long-term strategy to ensure our communities are well supported and to defund and dismantle the racist systems of policing and incarceration. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is 5362. 5362, please press star six to unmute. We appear to have lost that caller. Our next caller is 8344. 8344, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Chloe Cowan and I'm a part of Youth Will and the ISDF Coalition. I'm speaking in support of the Youth Environment and Recreation Corps that will provide low-income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness. Every youth in our region deserves the opportunity to thrive, and we can help give them that opportunity by amplifying systems in our county. Having a brighter future starts with supporting the future change makers that are our youth. I also ask that you please ensure that the Mobile Crisis Response Team's Office of Labor Standards Enforcement and Immigrant Legal Defense Program this year are fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as ISDF's request for an independent audit of the sheriff's budget. We must uplift our community members and hold the systems that we fund accountable. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 8340. 8340, please press star six to unmute. Good evening, Chair and Supervisors. This is Lucero Sanchez with San Diego. It looks like she may have dropped off. Oh, she just rejoined. 8340, please press star six to unmute. Hello, sorry about that. It got muted again. Um, good evening, Chair and Supervisors. This is Lucero Sanchez with San Diego Coastkeeper, also a member of San Diego Green New Deal Alliance. 
and Quality of Life Coalition, I'd like to speak in favor of funding for stormwater infrastructure and green infrastructure. Ensuring these are properly funded helps ensure public health and safety, reduce pollution and climate resilience. I'd like to ask the board to fully fund key sustainability and climate justice items, including the Regional Sustainability Plan, the Climate Action Plan, Departmental Sustainability Plans, the Sustainability and Natural Resource Reorganization, the Office of Environmental Justice, and the Comprehensive Native Plant Landscaping Policy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next caller is 5362. 5362, please press star six to unmute. Hi, good evening. My name is Judith Howell. I live in District 4, and I'm calling on behalf of Planned Parenthood of the Pacific Southwest and the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. I'd like to uplift the following items. Please support the pilot program to expand access to doulas in San Diego County. Doulas support better maternal health and birth outcomes, which is especially important to combat health disparities faced by Black and Indigenous people. I also want to voice my support for the Youth Environmental Corps program, and lastly, an audit of the Sheriff's Department. This entire board has voiced the need for transparency and accountability. We need to keep the Sheriff's Office accountable. We need to do much more to address public safety and addressing the racist system that still criminalizes and endangers the lives of people of color. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 7885. 7885, please press star six to unmute. 7885, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Our next caller is 7164. 7164, please press star six to unmute. Hello, my name is Judah Coker and I am an organizer with the San Diego Organizing Project as well as a member of Invest in San Diego Families. I'm also a resident of District 5. After years of advocacy by ISDF partners, this new Board of Supervisors has finally listened to our communities. I especially want to thank Supervisor Vargas, Lawson Rummer, and Fletcher for your leadership and the work that you've done to begin reversing years of damage. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have helped pass in San Diego County this year. Thank you for supporting the Mobile Crisis Response Team's Office of Labor Standards and Enforcement and Able Immigrant Legal Defense Program this year. Please ensure that these items are fully funded in the final draft of the budget to support our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 8787. 8787, please press star six to unmute. 8787. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Colleen Nikki, and I am a faith leader of St. John Missionary Baptist Church in Ocean Oceanside. And we are affiliated with the San Diego Organizing Project and invest in San Diego families. And I'm a resident of Carlsbad in District 5. And after um, advoc advocacy of ISDF partners, this new Board of Sup Supervisors has finally listened to our community. I especially want to thank Supervisors Supervisors Bar Vargas, Lawson and Remmer, and Fletcher for your leadership and the work you have done to begin revising the years of damage. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have helped pass in San Diego County this year. Thank you for supporting the Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, and Immigration Legal Defense Program this year. Please ensure these items are fully funded in the final draft of our budget to support our community. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Our next caller is 6686. 6686. Please press star 6 to unmute. 6686. Please press star 6 to unmute. Hi, my name is Julia Olson. I'm an attorney with the Public Defender's Office, and I live in District 4. I'm calling to speak against the proposed budget, specifically the funding for the Sheriff's Department. The emergency orders during COVID allowed for the release of lower-level offenders and reduced the jail population by about 2,000 people. 
During this time, the county also provided additional but temporary services for homeless individuals. This change gave us the chance to question whether the way we were doing things before was right, whether there was a way to make it better. Crime is a symptom of larger social issues. It's a symptom of poverty, of mental health, of past trauma, of addiction, and lack of positive opportunities. I'm asking the board to grow from some of the changes made during the pandemic to find more creative ways to address crime. If public safety is our goal, the most productive way to handle crime is to fix the root cause of it, rather than incarcerate individuals for the behavior after it has already occurred. Our ability to address these problems that plague the people who cycle in and out of the criminal legal system is restricted by the resources that we have and the agencies that are funded. By sending more funding to the Sheriff's Department, we ensure that we will continue to use carceral responses to San Diegans that are struggling the most, a strategy that historically has not worked. I'm asking the board to grow with the times and to redirect funds allocated for the Sheriff's Department to conduct a data-driven study on alternatives to incarceration and what services people in our community need. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5323. 5323, please press star six to unmute. Good evening, supervisors. My name is Kent Lee, and I'm a resident of District 3, a board member of the Miramisa Community Planning Group, and co chair of the San Diego Asian Pacific Islander Coalition, uh, bringing together over 30 API organizations throughout San Diego County. Um, I'd like to take a moment just to applaud many of the initiatives in the proposed budget that will truly advance our region on multiple fronts regarding equity, sustainability, and to meet a variety of ongoing community needs. I'm especially calling in to support the transfer of funds for the Mira Mesa Teen Center, formerly the Epicenter, and really to express the excitement that many of us have for um, a reestablished community center uh, to serve one of the most diverse communities on all of San Diego. Um, we're looking forward to working collaboratively with the county uh, to deliver meaningful programs to serve the community. And uh, once again, I want to thank you for your support. Thank you. Our next caller is 0746. 0746, please press star six to unmute. Hi, I'm Leanna Steinberg Casper, a resident of District 3 and a volunteer with San Diego 350. I'm calling in to ask the Board of Supervisors to fully fund the county's commitments to, to sustainability, including the regional and developmental sustainability plans, the Office of Environmental Justice, and the Youth Environment Corps. Our state is already facing the effects of climate change in the form of heat, drought, sea level rise, and devastating wildfires. These effects will only intensify and further endanger our communities moving forward. So it is vital that we fund programs that will both help mitigate the problem and prepare us and our most vulnerable populations to face its impacts. For the sake of my own future and those of my fellow San Diegans, I urge you to please provide the full funds requested for the county's sustainability efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 2932. 2932, please press star six to unmute. Good evening to the board, my fellow SDIU members and members of the public. My name is Natalie Musillo and I'm a paralegal with the San Diego County Public Defender's Office. I'm calling in to address the board regarding the staffing and funding discrepancies between our office and the district attorney's office. I believe the foremost issue of importance for the board is a budget driven by equity. The current staffing numbers within the district attorney's office for paralegals exceeds 100. The current paralegal numbers in my office barely breaks 20. This does a disservice to the attorneys we support and the clients we represent. We are also lacking a paralegal supervisor. And while this could be an issue addressed by my office, an increased budget would make it easier to do so. In addition, paralegals as a whole need an increased number of steps to create upward mobility and increase our retention rate. This has long been an issue for my office specifically, and in the current climate, the only responsible thing to do would be to address this concern quickly and efficiently. I'm imploring the board to begin talks to increase the public defender's budget specifically for paralegal staff so that our office can relieve the burden from our attorneys, create a more inclusive workplace for all job types, give our paralegals a chance to build their skills, and in turn, give our clients the fervent representation they are all guaranteed by the Constitution. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you. Our next caller is 5273. 5273, please press star six to unmute. Good evening. My name is Mahan Abdullahi with Mass Pace and part, uh, partner of ISDF Coalition. Our coalition partners, as so many others have stated, have been advocating for years for our communities to be listened to and prioritized. So it's such a fresh uh, breath of air, uh, especially with this new board of supervisors who are listening, and it's important to note that. So thank you again, Supervisors Fletcher, Farkas, and Lawson Weimer, for your continued support and leadership. Our budget and the budget of the county should be a reflection of our values and our priorities. Hence, I'm urging the board to fully fund the following community programs and services, the Mobile Crisis Response Team, Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, Immigrant Legal Defense Fund, um, and so on and so forth, including uh, funding for the new Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs. Fully investing in these services is a must, as outlined by our coalition uh, numerous times throughout the budget cycle. While we are moving forward as, our, as a county, our members and coalition urge a full audit of the Sheriff's Department. There's no information on how the Sheriff's Department spends the billion dollars of our money, hence why our ISDF coalition is calling for this audit. To ensure transparency and accountability of how public dollars are being used, the Board of Supervisors should call for an audit of the Sheriff's budget that must be conducted by the county within the next 180 days. This audit should include, but not limited to, the components shared in the letter submitted to the board by the ISDF coalition this week, in addition to any additional information requested by the public in the next 60 days. We need more government transparency, more public accountability, less incarceration and policing. It's time for a change, time for our county to move forward and repair the damages of previous years. Let's keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 7832. 7832, please press star six to unmute. 7832. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening to all of you. My name is Edwina Castaneda, staff nurse at Edgemoor and proud SEIU local 221 union member and working for the county for nine years. On behalf of my co-workers, I would like to bring our concern regarding our pay scale at Edgemoor. Our pay scale is too low and it, it is not even competitive compared to outside facilities. Edgemoor has been hiring and hiring our new nurses but cannot retain them. Newly hired nurses are quitting due to, due to low pay scale and nothing on our retirement tier. Then, then came to a point that we were physically and emotionally exhausted due to the staffing issue. We are working hard in order to give excellent care for our residents and maintain our five-star facility, but yet our pay is very low. If current nurses are due to retire, who will take care of our residents at Edgemoor if we cannot retain our nurses due to our low pay scale? I'm hoping and encouraging all of you to review our pay scale and increase our pay and add it on, our, on your budget. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Our next caller is 1830. 1830. Please press star six to unmute. Good evening. My name is Krisha. San Diego County residents believe this is a planned systemic attempt to force residents to get the shot through AB 262, AB 389, and patient access and interoperability final rule CMS 911 5 F. The CMS final rule requires hospitals, counties, and physicians to, to provide to the government patient net information, medical information, including but not limited to patient current address, medical clinical notes, and most concerning our immunization records. AB 262 language is vague, but it's clear it gives the local county health officers full discretion and power to, to issue orders to other governmental ent entities within the local health offer officer's jurisdiction to take any action that the local health officer deems necessary to control the spread of a communicable disease using taxpayers' money. Any action can include removing you or your family members from your home if the California governor or HHS local agency deems any person to threat to public health. AB 389 authorizes a fire protection district to enter into a written subcontract with a private ambulance service and authorize the county to develop a emergency medical services program. It requires the county developing such a program to designate a local EMS agency that is required to be a county health department. 
an agency established and operated by the county. Article 11, Section 4 and 5 of California Constitution provide that charter cities and counties may develop ordinance to govern local affairs and further that ordinance pass these entities take precedent over conflicting state laws as the local affairs, such as the county health officer's decision surrounding the implementation of Cal HSC 120175.5. We, the people of San Diego County, request you, the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, pass an ordinance that explains how AB 262 will be implemented within the county. As a consequence of the foregoing, we respectfully request the county to approve, adopt, and ratify an ordinance that clearly interprets Cal HSC 120175.5 as follows. It will never be interpreted to permit the county public health officer to remove citizens of San Diego County from the residents under any circumstances, and yeah. it will never let citizens have more due process under the right. Inter Thank you. Our next caller is 8621. 8621, please press star six to unmute. 8621, please press star six to unmute. Hi, my name is Estella, and I'm from District 1. I'm with you for a um, member of the Invest of San Diego Family Coalition, and I'm speaking in support of the Youth Environment Recreation Code that will provide low-income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness in the growing sector of the green economy. I believe every youth in our region deserves the opportunity to thrive by amplifying systems in our country. We can make sure to reach youth across the region. We want to make sure we know where our money is going. As much of the country funds as possible should be going to the programs and services that our community needs, such as more affordable housing and higher wages for workers. I urge you to fund the Immigrant Legal Defense Program Access to legal counsel is fundamental to fairness and justice in our country. SC shouldn't allow immigrants to go underrepresented in immigration proceedings. The country is spending one billion on the sheriff's department more than any other department, which limits the resources available for programs and services that our community needs. Our community will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have helped pass in San Diego County this year. In addition to that youth course program, I ask that you please ensure the mobile crisis response team and Office of Labor Standards Enforcement. This year, you are fully, this year, I fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as the ISDF request for an independent audit of the sheriff's budget. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 5715. 5715, please press star six to unmute. 5715. Hello? Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Warsan and I am with Youth Wall, a member of, a proud member of the community, um, excuse me, a proud member of the Invest in San Diego Families Coalition. And I am a resident of District 2. I am calling in support of the following ISDF priorities. Um, ensuring funding for the mobile crisis response team, funding the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement, funding um, for legal immigrant defense program, funding for the Youth Environmental Corps. Uh, youth throughout San Diego County de deserve to be invested in and by investing in the Youth Environmental Food and Recreation Corps, we are investing in the future of our youth and in our community. Lastly, I am asking you all to support ISDF's request for an independent audit of the sheriff's budget. Our community deserves transparency in, on how our tax dollars are spent. The bottom line is we as the community are asking you as our elected representatives to invest our tax dollars that we pay into our community. Thank you so much for your leadership and have a great night. Thank you. Our next caller is 9386. 9386, please press star six to unmute. 9386. Yes, this is Mary Harris. Um, I am a member of the Alpine Community Planning Group. That would be District 2. I'm here to say that I support the Alpine County Park. I am grateful to the Board of Supervisors, both past and present. I am grateful to those who worked for over two decades 
support obtaining a community park for Alpine, especially after being told by our planning group to forget about getting a park because there was no land available. I'm especially grateful to a former planning group member, Lou Russo, for discovering a suitable property for the park and bringing it to the attention of the county. Uh, I can access the park site off of my street in Alpine and Olivewood Lane in 10 minutes, an easy 10 minute walk. Therefore, it is not an out of reach park by any means. As a troubled youth living in a park, near a park rather, saved my life, providing me free access to many services, both through sports, nature, and social opportunities. My favorite park is Harry Griffin in La Mesa, and it continues to provide me as an adult many of the same opportunities, though my needs as an adult are different. Uh, Harry Griffin Park also contains the uh, Canine Corners Dog Park. Harry Griffin Park is 53 acres. By contrast, only 26 acres of the 98 acres is being scheduled for development for the Alpine County Park, for an active park. I myself would prefer to see the entire 98 acres developed. 26 is very conservative. I believe we can reach a fair compromise. I want to see the youth of Alpine be able to have the access to what I did as a youth. Thank yeah. you. Uh, well, I want to see a park which provides for all ages, a park for everyone as Alpine grows. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 2053. 2053, please press star six to unmute. 2053, please press star six to unmute. We'll come back. Recalling 0722, 0722, please press star six to unmute. This is Barry Hicks calling. I have, I, I for two hours and 45 minutes, and you called me once before. I have to pull up my notes. Okay, ready to go. Um, thank you for calling me back. I was really panicked. I wouldn't have an opportunity to speak in opposition to the uh, proposed um, activity complex um, for Wright Field Ecological Preserve in Alpine. I think I think that to um, the approval of a sports complex here. Um, borders on criminal because so many of the issues have not been addressed or mitigated. Destruction of bi biological resources, wildfire danger, road safety, daily and during wildfire, the availability of water, the cost of water, maintenance, and so on. I do not support the proposed 25-acre county park, which comprises a skate park, bike park, multiple soccer field areas, baseball, softball, basketball, pickleball, and 300 parking spaces adjacent to an ecological reserve. Not only does this not align with the initial 12 to 15 acre community park concept, it does not respect the area's rural and natural heritage, Wrights Field, which is an important part of what makes Alpine special. It's too big, 300 parking spaces, bigger than the largest commercial parking lot in Alpine. The road, South Grade Road, is a two-lane country road without upgrades. No sidewalks, no turn lanes, currently dangerous. It has been the site of accidents and deaths. There are no, There is, is no room for widening, nor have any... Thank you. It's been proposed in the uh, project. Thank you. Further concerns. Thank you. Your time, is up. Your time is up. Thank you very environmental much. Environmental and fiscal impact on the surrounding. Our next caller is 2973. 2973. Please press star six to unmute. 2973. Please press star six to unmute. 
Okay, recalling 2053. 2053, please press star six to unmute. 2053, please press star six to unmute. Five, I can see that you've unmuted. You may need to unmute your phone. We're having a hard time hearing uh, 2053. How about now? Can you hear me now? It's a little bit better, yes. Hi, my name is Midad Shloja. Is it better now? It's better, please proceed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Midad Shloja. I'm an American from Iraq, District 4 Mission Hill resident, uh, ACLU board member, and uh, Assembly District 78 Democratic Delegate. Big shout for the forward looking vision and hard work of my county board of supervisors, Nathan Fletcher. As a county resident, I ask you to think of your legacy. Look at your life from the end and how you want to be remembered. I ask you to revisit your campaign promises. I am against the proposed $1 billion budget that will go to the sheriff's department. I call for an audit on their budget instead. We don't need more incarceration of our people of color. I want in my opinion. The new country adopted over seven billion dollars worth of laws in this city. I hope to have committed budget is built on lessons learned from the past, designed to help improve the lives of the most vulnerable San Diegans. That's what I call a country. I am confident that collectively we will combat COVID-19, navigate the economic downturn. And begin to address the social injustice and racial equity issues facing our region. I would like the county board of supervisors to prioritize increasing public and affordable housing for middle and lower income families and people of color by encouraging high density housing and discouraging subdivisions of mansions that cost $800,000. Make San Diego housing affordable. It's one of the human fundamental needs. Prioritize walkable neighborhoods and preserve our natural space for the enjoyment of all while protecting the environment. This program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is 7766. 7766, please press star six to unmute. 7766, please press star six to unmute. Last call for 7766, please press star six to unmute. Chair Fletcher, we're not seeing any, um, oh, looks like they just unmuted. My name is Victoria Genov. I am a resident of District 5. Um, today I'm speaking in support of the Youth Environment and Recreation Corps that will provide low-income youth with employment opportunities and career readiness in the sector of the green economy. I believe that every youth deserves opportunity to thrive, um, specifically by amplifying systems in our county, and we must make sure that we reach youth across all regions. I want to specifically thank Supervisors Lawson, Raymer, Vargas and Fletcher for your leadership this budget cycle and the work you've done to begin revising years of damage. Our communities will greatly benefit from the policies and investments you have helped pass in San Diego County this year. In addition to the Youth Corps program, I ask that you please ensure that the Mobile Crisis Response Team's Office of Labor Standards Enforcement and Immigrant Legal Defense Program are fully funded in the final draft of the budget, as well as ISDF's request for an independent audit of the Sheriff's budget. Thank you. Chair Fletcher, that concludes oral public testimony on the budget. 
members of the public may still provide written testimony on the budget online. To comment online on the budget, please visit the county's website at budget.sandiegocounty.gov. Any testimony submitted must be in writing and receive no later than the close of the budget hearings, which is next Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021 at 5 p.m. All materials received will be distributed to the board, the chief administrative officer, the office of financial planning and placed in the public record. Change letters from board members and the chief administrative officer are also due to the clerk of the board's office by the close of budget hearings on Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021 at 5 p.m. Law precludes the clerk from accepting change letters after that deadline. All change letters received will be distributed to the board, the chief administrative officer, the office of financial planning shortly after that 5 p.m. deadline. But the deliberations and adoption are scheduled for Tuesday, June 29th, 2021 at 2 p.m. And the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board will take place on Tuesday, June 29th, 2021 at 9 a.m. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Thank you. We want to thank uh, all the members of the public who took the time to uh, weigh in on the budget. I want to thank my two colleagues uh, for joining us this evening. Let me ask any comments you would like to make. I just want to say thank you. Uh, is it working? Thank you. Just thank you so much um, to all of the, the team and everybody that's put all this work um, and to every one of the callers for waiting um, and really giving us their perspective. We really appreciate it. Um, well, I want to thank my two colleagues for being here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also uh, really want to thank county staff. Um, I know these are late nights, and I think it's really important that we're doing this and um, are making the county transparent and accessible to the public. And I know it asks a lot of everyone, uh, but I think it's really, really valuable. And I thank you all for, for doing that and for the work that you do to serve our community. So thanks. All right, thank you all. Uh, with that, we stand adjourned.